as quickly as possible. Wake the song of joy and gladness. It's the hymn number 34. Wake the song of joy and gladness. He that bring your noblest lays. Wake the song of joy and gladness. He that bring your noblest lays. Banish every thought of sadness. Pouring forth your highest praise. Sing to him. Sing to him who has brought us once again with friends to meet and his loving voice has taught us of the way to Jesus' feet. Sing, wake the song, wake the song, wake the song, the song of joy and gladness. Wake the song, wake the song. with songs and banners joyfully with songs and banners we will greet the festal day shout aloud shout aloud oh glad hosanna and our grateful moment we will chant our Savior's glory while our thoughts we raise above Telling still the old, old story. The old, old story. Precious the redeeming love. Sing, wake the song. Wake the song. The song of joy and gladness. Wake the song. Wake the song. The song. We say thanks to thee, O Holy Father. Thanks to Thee, O Holy Father, for the mercies of the year. And may each heart as air we gather, swell with gratitude sincere. Thanks to Thee, O loving Savior, for redemption. Holy Spirit, sweetly draw us near to God. Wake the song, wake the song, wake the song, the song of joy and gladness. Wake the song, wake the song, the song of jubilee. How could we go throughout today without saying thank you, Lord? Marvelous grace of our loving Lord. Grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured. There where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. It's 109 from your hymnals. Marvelous grace of our love. Soul with infinite loss. Grace that is greater. Yes, grace untold. Points to the refuge. The mighty cross. Infinite 
matchless grace. Freely bestowed, freely on all who believe. You that are longing to see His face, will you this moment? His grace receive. We sing grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse. We live. Thank you very much. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. everybody it is a good thing to be a part of the family of God we are because we are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn which are written in heaven and to God the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. With this is in mind, today's program is centered around one of the parables of Jesus, the wedding garment. It opens to us a lesson of highest consequence. It opens to us a union of humanity with divinity. The wedding garment represents the character which all should possess who shall be fit to be a guest at the marriage supper in heaven. And so to prepare our hearts and minds for the day's activities, we will sing for our opening song 212. It is almost time for the Lord to come. I hear the people say. Shall we all stand, everybody? Mm -hmm. 
Tis almost time for the Lord to come, I hear the people say. The stars of heaven are growing dim, it must be the breaking of the day. Breaking of the day, oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The night is almost gone, the day is coming on. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The signs foretold, the signs foretold in the sun and moon, in earth and sea and sky. the breaking of the day, oh it must be the breaking of the day, the night is almost gone, the day is coming on, oh it must be the breaking, it must be time for the waiting church, it must be time for the waiting church, just to cast a pride away. should go quickly out in the streets go quickly out in the streets and late and in the broad highway and call the main the heart and blind the heart and blind to be ready for the breaking of the day and oh it must be the breaking of the The breaking of the day. The night is almost gone. The day is coming on. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 22. And Sister Leanne Spence will read verses 8 to 10 in your hearing. After which, Elder Steve Williams will pray. If he is not here as yet, we'll have Sister Juliet Buckley as his substitute. Matthew chapter 22. Verses 8 to 10 reads, Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. Amen. Let us reverently bow our heads for prayer. O most gracious, loving, and compassionate Father, art in heaven, hallowed be thy holy name. Father, we come this morning in our nothingness to give you thanks and praise for waking us in our right mind, for setting us on our feet, and that your Holy Spirit has bid us to come and to worship at your feet. We pray that you will forgive us of all our sins and help us to leave all our burdens at your feet and look to you who is the author and finisher of our faith. Thank you for being our God. 
thank you for being the life giver. And as we come to praise your name today, we pray that whatever we do or say will be done to glorify and honor your righteous name. Remember those that are on their way. Give them journeying mercies and help them that as they get here, whatever it may be, let us give you all the praise due unto your matchless name. Be with this program today, we pray. Remember our superintendent as she leads out. I pray that the Holy Spirit will endure from on high. And whatever is said and done, may it be to each and every one of us that we may take it into consideration and we may live closer to you so that when you shall burst the eastern sky to gather your children home, not one of us that are bowing before you this morning will hear depart from me, but will all will hear well done from your blessed lips. This I do humble ask in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king who made a marriage for his son. And he sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden, but they would not. Supper will be 
servant yes your honor I heard you call did you did you need me yes I did but calm down calm down this is very important yes your honor come close come close as you know my son is getting married yes Remember yes sir I told you at my trusted servant yes sir okay now there is a special feast and I need you to go to get some special people okay. who have been invited to this feast. Now, it is very important yes, sir. because their eternal destiny hangs on this. Right, so now, there's serious. also, yes, it is serious. It is also one thing I want you to remember to tell them that the garment is white. Oh. No other colors will be accepted. Everyone who is bid must be dressed in white. Hold on, hold on, hold on boss. I don't want to hold you for things, Dad, so let me write it down. All right, because I don't want you to forget anything. So it has to be dressed in white. Dressed in white, yes. All right. uh, and their eternal destiny hangs on it. Eternal destiny hangs on it. Oh, yes. All right, so the marriage of your son. Yes. Yes, All right, yes. and I have killed the fattest calf, the bulls, the rams. The table is well set. They will be in need of nothing. Everything is prepared for them. So, All they need to do is come. Whoa. You kill, you kill Billy and yes, Momo? Yes, yes, man. Billy and Momo. Oh. All right. All right, so, all right. I have everything. So, all right, so I'm to get... All right, and you said the persons who are supposed to come is... Um, so, so yes. Okay. All right. All right. And they must be dressed in... White. Good. Thank you. All right? Now you may go. All right, Your Honor? Your yes. wish is my command. Okay. All right, so... All right. Um, so we have here Sister Leon. I wonder where Leon is right now. Sister Leon. You have been summoned by the king. He has given me a special message to give to you. And you see, because I don't want to leave out anything. What is the message? Just get on I it. I wrote it down. Yes, what is it? All right. Hurry up, go in. I don't have time for right. this. It says, hear ye. Hear ye. Yes, yes. My son will be getting married soon. Is that so? Yes, and I'm inviting so, you to be a special it, guest. It, listen, I don't have time for this. I'm too well, busy. Hold on, I, I, listen, no, listen no, to me. It is very important. I don't have time for all right, this. Just, Do all right, you understand? Listen, listen. Imagine, I'm on my way to a funeral. It is very important. I want to tell you everything. It's very important that you attend because your destiny, your eternal destiny depends on it. And listen, you must be clothed in white garment. You can't say Why are you still you. talking? Why are you still talking? <laughs> The king prepared a huge feast for you. Now he killed this fatted calf and his goat. And he's preparing a, a, a huge feast for you. So you better ensure that you are there. All right. All right let me, who, who is next? But Mr. Morgan? Mr. Morgan? Ah, morning. How are you doing? All right. So the king gave me a special message to give to you. you know, and he says that I'm to give you every single word of it. All right. So you ready for the message? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. He says, hear ye, hear ye. My son will be getting married very soon. And you're invited as a special guest. Whoa. So that is the king call, you know. What an honor. All right. What He's, an honor. He says that it's very important that you attend this marriage Whoa. because your eternal destiny hangs on it. Whoa. He I says you must ensure. You see this jacket? If it's it alone, you have, you have to go bleach it. It has to be white. 
Right? Yes, sir. And he has killed two of his, listen, his long time in growing those goats and those cows, you know. Sure. And him have Momo and, 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 Momo? and, yeah, and Billy. He killed those two goats and prize see. goats. He has prepared a feast for you. So he's expecting you to be there. All right? So this is a message from the king. I need you to, 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 to be there because he'll be angry if you're not there. You know, it is such a great honor to, to eat at the king's table. A you, mean, you mean his son is getting married? That's right. Wow. You know, I just can't just don't turn up. You know, tell the king for me. Tell the king because he's, he's, he's the king. I can't just don't turn up. Tell him that I have just planted this big field of East Indian and Julie mango. I just can't miss out on it. Tell the king that I'm, I'm sorry. I just can't make it. Just tell the king that I can't make it this time. Not this time around. But, but when you see me dying trial, the two of them, <laughs> right, I, I, do, I did my part, you know. It's who, who else the king have on this, this thing here? Tony Ann? Miss Tony Ann? How are you doing, miss? I am wonderful. How are you? All right, I'm fine, thank you. You see, the king has given me a message to give to you. And he wanted me to give you a verbatim. He says, hear ye, hear ye. My son will be getting married soon. And I'm inviting you to be a special guest. So is, is you know, a normal something. I All know, right? right? Special guest. Yes, it is ma very important that you attend because what? Your eternal destiny depends on this. And guess right? what? I love weddings, you see. Oh my, I am so elated to be invited. Right. You're the first one to sound like you're going to come, you know. So we're glad. All right, importantly, you must be clothed in white. You can't wear this back, so you don't have to worry. All right? So, you, guess what? Him kill him fat calf and him fat bull. You know, men are really like them kind of meat there. No, worry yourself. Him have fish? Vegemins. Vegemins right. is there. Yes, so, yes. you You need to be there. The king has made provision for you and he wants you to be there. So listen, don't disappoint the king, you know. But hear what? You know, even though I love wedding, I just opened my illustrious store, Tashko, and I am busy, busy marketing my goods. So guess what? Tell the king that though I am so delighted and honored to be invited to his son's wedding, I will have to pass it up this time. God bless you, you hear? All right. Boy, this don't look good at all. So it's look like me and the king alone. Got... Is, who else is on this list? Um, is, is who this? Brother Otino, our sister Denisha. Yes, the first couple, they must understand. Um, them just married to you, know, so they know them ago. Welcome well, to the king feast. Oh, oh, Brother Otino, sister Denisha. Greetings, greetings. How are you? Yes, How are man. you? I'm, I'm good. Guess what happened? I want to look happy and you know, I want to transfer that happiness to the king's thing. Okay. Right? Because What's guess happening? what? His son is getting married. Really? And, yes, man. And he has invited you. You see your name? Otino and Denisha. He has invited you to the, to, the, to, the wedding of his son, to the wedding of his son. You know, to be honest, I've never been to a royal wedding. And guess what? We dress I hear that purple is royalty. No, so we're, we're no, no, ready. no, 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 no. You have to go change the shirt and the, and the scarf. You have to be in white. He says that it is important that you wear white. Listen to me. You can't afford to miss this wedding now because he says that your eternal destiny depends on it. Right? Really? Yes, man. You can't afford to, 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 to don't come to the king's thing. So, you know, if he's if thinking, I, I spoke to some people before, and if he's thinking, you're thinking about telling me no, you better forget about it. Right? He says that he has prepared some whole heap of food. He killed his calf. He killed Billy. And he, and he killed the rammy goat when him Billy. You remember that big one? Yes, yes, yes. And yes. he killed the, 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 the mice bull. Them called Momo. Momo? He's out in the town. Listen, you have to come. He has killed them and he has prepared a feast for, for, for you. So, um, so you need to be there. Unfortunately, we just got married. So we have to go on our honeymoon. So we don't really have time to come. You know, just wish him well for us, yeah? Just yes. wish him well. Come on, wifey. So she look beautiful. We have to spend some time together. Later, later. Whoa. I don't like all this panning out, you know. It no look good. Kingy? 
I wonder if, I wonder if we can. King? Yes, servant. Um, I want to run come to you now, but I'm kind of afraid because I have some really, really bad news to give to you. Bad news? Yes, About sir. About what? You see, everybody, every single one of them who you sent me to, to, to talk to, they just don't like them to want to come, but they have all refused the invitation. What? Yes, sir. It's not me, you know, them. They have refused the invitation. My anger is not against you, my servant. You mean from 1844, my messengers have been preaching the kingdom of God, and to this day, they are still not listening to the word and refuse to come to the supper? Uh, Where are my other servants? <laughs> Boss, I barely escape. It's a good thing I can run. You see? They have, they, have, they have mocked us. They have beaten us. And guess what? They have deafened their ears to the preaching of the word. They have killed what? us of them. Kill them. I alone escape. Okay, tell you what. I want you to go to Dudley Burke Lane. I want you to go to Ivan Lane. And while you go down to uh, Abbey Labby Lane, all the environments of South Haven, invite everybody, sick, lame, and lazy. And if them can walk or you can find something to carry them, carry them, mm -hmm. because they must hear the word. All right. King, you don't have to say anything more. You know I have your back. This is the last warning. I, I, all right. Fair enough. All right, King. So I'm on it. We have the greatest chefs in the Yalas and the Woodburn district. They just know how to operate in the King's kitchen. They are Elder Levy from the Lloyd's Seventh-day Adventist Church. We have Elder Kane from Woodburn. And we have Elder Green from the Yellow Seventh-day Adventist Church. So hold up your place as these cooks prepare the meal for you to enjoy at the king's table. Hear them. But before they come, we will have a special song by Elder Damien Davis. Happy Sabbath, everyone. How are we feeling? Nice, blessed and highly favored. Lately I've been thinking As I looked all around me I see by the signs That soon we're gonna be leaving the bridegroom is coming to take us all away. Maybe tomorrow, but I pray that it's today that we will fly away in the twinkling of an eye, leaving all our heartaches. And telling them all goodbye Yes, we will fly away When he hear his father say Jesus, go and get your bride For today is your wedding day bridegroom in the clouds in the skies will he telling you hello or telling you goodbye oh be sure and be ready to meet him face to face we've got to fight a good fight We've got to keep our faith And we will fly away In the twinkling of an eye 
leaving all our heartaches and telling them all goodbye. Yes, we will fly away when he hears his father say, Jesus, go and get your bride. Today is your wedding day. all our heartaches and tell them all goodbye yes we will fly away when we hear his father say oh Jesus go and get your bride for today Amen and amen. Good to be here in the house of the Lord. All of us worship him together. And as we know, today is a high day in Zion. What do you say? Amen. amen. Why is a high day? The Sabbath. Did you know that when the seventh day Sabbath fall on the, what do you call it, feast days, which is Sabbath also. If the feast day and the seventh day Sabbath fall on the same day, it's called a high day. And from 1844, we are living in the anti-typical day of atonement, right? So every Sabbath is a high day. Okay. We are asking that the children kindly move to the tent over there. We'll be careful. Okay. Before we begin, let us have a word of prayer. We ask Elder Green. My name is Elder Levy from the Lloyd's Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we have with us today Elder Green from the Yalas SDA. And we have also Elder Kane from Woodburn. But before we begin, we ask Elder Green to give us a short word of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pause to give you thanks for your mercy and your grace towards us. We thank you, Lord, for the word in which you have given us. And so as we... With you, Lord, I pray that your divine Holy Spirit will be in our midst and that you will direct our hearts, our thoughts, and our minds and help, Lord, that at the end of this review, you will be glorified. Your name will be high and lifted up. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we have come to the end of this quarter lesson. And what a journey have it been traveling through the book of Psalms. And as we come to the end of this quarter, we realize that our final, what you say now, the, our final message, <laughs> how we come, how we conclude, is that it says what? Wait on the Lord. So as we dive into it this week, hope and trust of all of us will be edified. Elder Green, would you kindly lead us through the memory verse? Okay, um, the memory text is found in Psalm. 27 verse 14 and it says wait on the Lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart wait I say on the Lord waiting on the Lord say be of good courage we know that the waiting process can be a long and hard process now I remember during the COVID period and especially when you went to the tax office 
with a long and hard and frustrating wait. However, waiting on God, waiting is not a sitting down, falling of the hands, and waiting. It's a waiting with anticipation, a waiting with hope, a waiting with zeal, waiting knowing that something is about to happen. And so while we wait, we don't idly wait, but we are involved while waiting. Now, if we are waiting and we are idle, it simply means that we are going to be distracted. And so in our waiting period, we must be actively involved. And what actively involves mean? What are you waiting for? Where are you going? You need to take someone with you. And so while you are waiting, you are going to reach out to somebody else. Okay. Elder King? Okay. Um, the memory text is very, very, it's very wide, it's very deep. And I, as you wait, you wait according to the word of God. You see, the, the, this word here, wait, the operative word wait or the verb wait, action word, it has to deal with every aspect of our lives. In terms of decision making, we should wait on the Lord. What does the Lord have to say about the decisions that I want to make for my life on a day-to-day -day basis? Wait and be of good courage. In other words, don't be afraid. Develop this courage that you are strong and you are bold in being a servant of the living God. And it is very, very important because some people, um, they believe that God is only interested in certain aspects of their lives. When it comes on to Jesus, it is the total man, the total woman. And so your decisions, whatever you do, whatever you say, first must be Christ-centered. And then from that, then the, the, the decision you will make, you will have the patience and the courage to see the hand of God working in your life. Okay, so we are waiting. And this waiting entails what? Faith, right? The just must what? By faith. So this walk with Christ and this waiting on Christ is to see the fulfillment of what Christ has promised us. And we know that his promises were what? Are sure. So we need not to worry ourselves because if we'd realize that Abraham waited all long. The promise was made of a son and he has to wait 25 years, right? And it, it was later that I was studying the Bible, I realized one thing, you know, as we're talking about waiting on the Lord. The father, the patriarch of the Bible is Abraham, Isaac, and who? Jacob. Did you know that both, let's say both, let's like say, is what? Father, son, and grandson, three of them. God made a promise that he will bless the entire world through Abraham. But did you know that Abraham's wife was barren? Isaac's wife was barren? Even one of Jacob's wife was? Barren. That's how good God is. So when the Lord says, wait, we must have faith, knowing that it will come true, right? So we're going to jump on to Sunday, which speaks about what? The call of waiting. And the lesson give us some text here, the memory verse. And some others. And the question is, uh, what do these texts implore God people to do? And we know the answer, right? Is to wait. So this wait that we are waiting. When you, as Elder Green talk about the tax office, when you go there, you sit and wait, don't? Patiently. So the wait that we are waiting on God, God expects us to sit patiently and do nothing? Okay, we need to do what? Sow the seed. I don't want to stick so much to the lesson. We just want to bounce off each other here. So the waiting is not on one of idleness. So what about the waiting on God? Care to share, Elder Green, this wait? Mike, yes. It says here, waiting on the Lord is more than just hanging on. Yeah. It's a deep longing for God 
that is compared to an intense thirst in a dry land. In other words, if you are um, heading home and you are thirsty and you need some water to drink, you are anticipating reaching home. And when you know that when you reach home, you have more than enough water to drink. So, you, so therefore you are eagerly expecting to reach home so that you can quench your thirst. Now, so with our waiting, when we are waiting on God, it is not a, a waiting that we'll sit down and wait and wait and wait. This waiting entails us be mindful of the time in which we are living. Be mindful of those around us. Now, remember, as I said earlier, that we are waiting, so we must also prepare others to wait with us. Now, in our waiting, there will be destruction along the way. There will be disappointments along the way. And that is why it is important that each individual have a relationship with God. So that when things seem not to be going the way you want them to go, or you, you expect them to go, you, your waiting is not being disturbed. Because you have a clear idea of why you are waiting and what you are waiting on. And if you are easily distracted, then you will miss the mark. Okay. So. Elder King, waiting to me seems like it comes with challenges. What say you Indeed, it does come with challenges. If we go back to Anna, you know, when Anna saw that the other lady conceived, you know, she went into the church or into the temple and she prayed and prayed until her lips moved and nobody heard what she said. And so waiting is not just sitting down, it is doing something. You must be active in the work of God which is very important. You can't wait on God by sitting down. There must be action and there must be courage. You know the reason why the children of Israel could not enter the earthly Canaan? Because they did not have any courage. They fail to wait on God. And it is the same thing today with humanity. God is not moving too fast. God, we must remember that God is never late. And God is never hurly. He's always what? On time. That's the God we serve. And so, when you get it, and sometimes God knows what God knows. Not all the time. Not sometimes. All the time, God knows what is best for us. And so, it's not everything we wait on, we are going to get it. But when it comes, look at Paul. Paul wanted to get rid of the thorn in the flesh. But indeed, God says it will remain with you. And Paul understand because of that close, intimate relationship with Christ. And this is the same example for us. When we are close to God, then when we see disappointments, we will not, we will not lose courage because God is still and will always be in control. Ella Levy. Okay, we'll jump on to Monday. It said, peace of a wean child. And we can break this down in many ways. Mothers, you know what it is to have a wean child, right? So the child that is still on the breast and don't reach the year of mat maturity where that child can do things for himself has to depend on you, right? So when that child come of age and is wean, no one can go and take up a cup of water for his or herself. Does that child still need the comfort and assurance of the parents. Because we come to God, we study his word, we understand his character and his nature and what God is like. So we live knowing that God will take care of us, just like a wind child. Although you're a wind, you're not independent of yourself. You have to depend on your parents. Likewise, we, we have to depend on God to supply our daily needs. But if we trust him and obey him and live by his words, we can rest assured that our bread and water will be sure. Amen. Elder.
Genesis 3.15 says that the seed of the woman will bruise the serpent's head. And if you read in the spirit of prophecy, it tells us that Eve believed that one of her sons would be that seed who would crush the serpent's head, but it wasn't. How long did we have to wait? Some over 2,000 years before the Messiah comes. So with God, waiting is not a problem. A, a thousand year, a day in the Lord's view a is like a thousand years. years, and a thousand years is like a day. To us human beings, we know that we are limited to time. And so when we are promised something, we want it when? Right now. now. But God doesn't work like that. Okay. So we have to wait. And I, I like the point that someone made, I think it's Elder Cain, about, uh, or it was yourself, about Abraham. Remember that Abraham, when he was 75, didn't have a child. His wife was 60. And when God says, I, I am going to give you a son, your wife Sarah shall have a son. Not only Sarah laugh, but Abraham laugh as well. Yes. They both laugh. Okay, it's a good joke. point. But God proved to them, if you think 75 is too old to have a child, I'm going to wait, let you wait till you're 100, 25 years mm -hmm. down the line. So Sarah bear a son when she was 90. Glory to wait, God. 25 years. So okay. waiting on the Lord, as our elder Greener said, while we're waiting, let us be busy doing something for God. Amen. So this wean child is a child of God. We can rest assured on that, right? This wean child is a child of God. So if you're not a child of God, you're still in need of somewhat. Milk. And what the Bible says about those who get milk, they are unskilled in the word of God. So when you wean, you become a child of God. Now you can angle the what? Hard food. Elder, you have a point. Quickly. Happy Sabbath, everyone. You know, this is one of the things. God, we are Adventists. And Adventists, we are looking for the second advent, the coming of the Lord and Savior. And we must be eagerly anticipating the coming. You know, Ella talk about being at the tax office. I have been at the tax office and see people waiting in long line. And you see, when they reach up to the counter, they do have their ID, the document's not ready. We must be ready, waiting. And so as we wait for the coming of the Lord and Savior, there are so many things that is there for us to do. We are to go, to preach, to teach. There are so many things to keep us active. And, and let me tell you, when you're waiting on a bus in Kingston, and you're on a route where a lot of different bus is, because I drive the bus for years, and when you're waiting on a route, you need to be looking out for your number bus and, and, and make sure that that bus don't pass you because it's going to be a long wait and you may never get another one. <laughs> Good point, good point. All right, as we're skipping on, we are pressed for time. Tuesday speaks about what? Bringing in the? Sheaves. The sheaves, and we know about to bring in the sheaves, you need to sow the what? Seed. Seeds. Luke 8, 11 tells us that the, the word of God is there. Or the seed is the word of? God. God. We cannot complete this lesson without touching and waiting in God's Sabbath, Sabbath. rest. Mm -hmm. Because that is where the rubber hit the road, brethren. As the last generation living on the earth in this time, we know that the Sabbath will play a vital part, right? And the spirit of prophecy let us know that not one of us will be sealed, what? While we have one spot of stain, it's left with us to remedy our defects and to clean the soul temple of every defilement. Then the latter rain will fall upon us as the early rain fell upon the disciple on the day of Pentecost. So brethren, as we are living in the last days, remember that the Sabbath is the thing that seals us. All of us love to talk about things like mark of the beast, but we don't hear anybody say nothing about what? The image. And if you know that the spirit of inspiration and the pen of inspiration say that God has shown me clearly that the image of the beast will be set up before the close of probation. Elder yes, um, and waiting in the Sabbath rest is very important. Now, the way we deal with the Sabbath determined whether or not we are truly waiting on Christ. If we are here and there and not keeping God's Sabbath, the wait ought to be kept. It simply means that we are not in the waiting room. 
we are full in ourselves. And so the Sabbath is a test of our character as to where we are and how ready we are. And so if we are not keeping God's Sabbath, because remember, you know, the Bible says we must even guard the edge of the Sabbath. And so this determines how we're waiting and what we are really waiting on. Okay. If we remember the parable in Matthew chapter 20 of the, when the king came out to examine the guests that he invited, one was found without a what? A wedding garment. Remember what the Lord said to him? He didn't say stranger. He said friend. Therefore, he knows what is required to enter into the rest of the Lord. But he came with his own righteousness. And while we are waiting, let us not be waiting in self-righteousness. We must be waiting in Christ. Yes. We must realize that we cannot, we by ourselves cannot change our own character. It is the Holy Spirit that changes the character if we are willing to change. So this man came with his own self-righteous yes. oh attitude like the young rich ruler. And Saul, before he was converted to Paul, because they believed that salvation was, can, can be achieved by just being obedient to the word of God and outside of the power of the Holy Spirit. So we have to be very careful because salvation is not by works. So while we are waiting, it's not based on our own works and our own righteousness. It is based on the righteousness of Christ. And so the man without the wedding garment, he was cast out because he was not resting according to the will of God, which is found in, in not only obedience to his word, but by the power of his Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. So as we enter upon the Sabbath rest, brethren, if we are not a wean child, hmm. where are we at? Right? Yeah. And you know what? As Seventh-day Adventists, we normally say we are here to preach the three angels' message. And many persons, I don't know if we, we should know that by heart, that the three angels' message contain the Sabbath. Right? So we can't be out there preaching three angels' message yeah. to give glory to God because the hour of his judgment. And we don't realize that it's a worship him that made the what? Amen. Heavens and the earth. That is the Sabbath, brethren. Yes. So in other words, we are giving an end-time message is the last final message. Is the most solemn message ever entrusted to man. So, brethren, let us find ourselves waiting on Christ while working to bring others into his kingdom. Amen. Quick point. Um, for those who just got baptized, I just want to encourage our newly baptism, baptized members that sometimes we might be waiting on the Lord and we might see things not happening the way we expect it to. Just continue to wait. And remember Abraham. When Abraham, God promised Abraham for that his seed shall, shall going to multiply on the earth. When God tell Abraham, Abraham wait 40 years after that promise. And in the same verse, God said that his wife was barren. Now, that, was, that takes faith to wait on that promise. So brethren, don't give up. If, if there's a crisis in your life, just remember Job. For the young people, just remember Job. If Satan did know that Job would be such a stalwart, today, he wouldn't trouble Job. Because Job win the victory. Plus, make millions of millions of people have a testimony because of Job. So when you are going through your trials, always share that testimony. That's, what, that's why we read the Bible, to look at the old and these people and compare it and, and have a testimony that somebody can get strength from you. So remember, go to Wednesday night meeting and Sunday night meeting. Amen. Thanks. Okay. Um, Thursday, joy comes in the morning. Morning signifies a new beginning. And um, our waiting will bring joy in the morning. Now, when we wait on the Lord, now, if you have gone through a long night with pain and sorrow and suffering, you are really anticipating daybreak. And even if the pain doesn't ease on daybreak, the fact that it is daylight, you are feeling more comfortable. 
So this morning that the, we are, that the joy will come is not, it may be not the morning of the day as we see it, but the morning says a new beginning, something's new, something different. And so this is what we are waiting for, the joy that will come after we have gone through our life of sorrow. Amen. Amen. We are pressed for time, but we want to say thanks for everyone that participated. And in summing up all of this, brethren, our waiting, I hope and trust and pray that our waiting will not be in vain. We'll make sure that our election sure is right where it ought to be, right? Wrapped up in King Jesus. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Amen. Happy Sabbath, saints of God. Amen, amen. Indeed, it is a high day in Zion. So, my task here today is simple. And I just want us to listen to Psalm 91, 91 verse 1. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name. Oh, most high God. Can we just say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. And so, I welcome you all, whether you are coming from the Neesbury area of White Horses, the Mango Place of Lloyd's, the busy city of Yalas, the nearest church to the tent, Philadelphia. Now we go down to the cool area of Albion. We go back up to the woody area of Woodburn. I hope I don't get myself in trouble for that. Then we travel a little longer up to, is it Rumble or Somerset that comes first? Uh, and that's up to Rumble, and then we rumble down to Somerset, to up to, <laughs> further up to, Somerset, you have to see with me on those directions, you know. Also, would like to welcome those of you who have joined us online. I just looked down in and I saw someone I almost missed. I think I am seeing Elder Michael Portius, who is the treasurer at EJC. Yes, man, it's a lucky thing you watch TV sometimes, you know. So, or else I would have missed him. So, welcome once. Welcome twice. The Lord bless and keep you. Let us stand as we do our welcome song. Where are the singers? I don't want anybody to walk if I start singing. The welcome song, please. Which one? Which one? If you're on. If you're on your way to heaven, then clap your hands, everybody. If you're on your way to heaven, clap your hands. And if your sins have been forgiven, clap your hands. Point to heaven in the sky, then shake hands with those nearby. If you're happy all the while, clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Cause if you're on your way to heaven, clap your hands And if you're not ashamed of Jesus, raise your hands And if you're taking a stand for Jesus, take a stand Now sit down and rest a while, turn to someone with a smile If you're happy all the while, clap your hands, clap your hands Clap your hands If you're on your way to heaven, clap your hands for if you're not ashamed of Jesus, raise your hands. And if you're taking a stand for Jesus, take a stand. Now sit down and rest a while. Turn to someone with a smile. If you're happy all the while, clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. If you're on your way to heaven, clap your hands. Oh, if you're on your way to heaven, clap your hands. And if you're on your way to heaven, clap your hands. 
And if you're on your way to heaven, clap your hands. Oh, my good servant. Yes. Yes, Your Highness. Have you made a call? Yes, you know, Your Highness, I, I did. I saw where are the people. I think they may be on their way. I, I, I spoke to them. Okay, hear what? Go and make that final call. Remember, it is no more time left. This is the final call. The fi All right? The final warning. Yes, and All remember, right. they must be in white. Good. All right, I'm, I'm ready. I am ready already. So I'm going to make the call again. Hopefully, they will come this time. All right. Oh. Hear ye, hear ye. All the inhabitants of the land. This is the final warning. The final call. Sir Steve. Elder Portius. Sister Suzette. Hear what the king has to say. He says, the father invites you to the wedding supper of the lamb. The blind, the lame, the poor, the rich from all nations, from all kindreds, from all tongue, from all people. Come, buy of him gold, try it in the fire. Yes. I self that you may see. But best of all, come. The you will be given a white raiment empty. and it will be covered. No with the blood of the Lamb. In the come one, come all. all the you must be whiter than snow. Come, taste and see all that the Lord is good. Come Maybe one, come all. The call is going out. The final call. In a courtroom, no debate. Work on earth. There will be no more time now is the time. Come one, come all.
So, my servant. Yes, sir. Just making the last check. Did you call the people? Yes, I did. So, where are they? They are. They are in front of you. Okay. Are you sure you told them the correct garment to be worn? Uh, King, if you don't believe me, ask them. I told them. Every single one of them. Were you all told the garment that you should have on? All right. So, why is this lady here in red? This is not the wedding garment. Me, me, what me, are you doing me, here in this me, color? Me, 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 me think say uh, anyway you go and worship uh, uh, the same God. Me, 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 me no, not so, Sunday. my friend. Me, me think say Sunday or the Sabbath. Not me, so, me, my me, friend. Me, me, me. What God says, that is what we do. There is no shortcut to heaven. Take her away. <laughs> Save me, no, sir. Revelation 3, <laughs> verse 17 says, 22 and verse 17, sorry, says, And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that hear it say, Come. And let him that is athirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the waters of life freely. The call is for you today. Come, taste, and see that the Lord is good. What more can I say? The parable reminds us today that Christ is examining the character of those whose names are written in the books of heaven. Before Jesus comes, we must, what did I say? We must be clothed in the righteousness of Christ. So a life of sanctification and daily coming to Jesus in total surrender will make us like David say, I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. This means that my name be retained in the book of life. Blessed are they who are called to the marriage supper. Be also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, son of man cometh. May God add his blessings to what we have heard and said today. Let us stand as we bow our heads for prayer. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you for so far back when the world began, you thought about this Sabbath. You, th you thought about a people who would respond to your call. And now we have converged under this tent just to honor and magnify your name in thanksgiving for being so powerful, for being so good, for being so kind. The song says, how oh, big is God to rule this mighty universe, but he can be small enough to live within our hearts. And so, Jesus, as we continue throughout the rest of this day, may your Holy Spirit rest among us richly. Father, hear our prayers. Forgive us again and help us to look forward to sit at that table where you will serve us. It's my desire, and I believe this is a desire for all of us, that we will be there in the name of Jesus. Let God's people say, Amen. God bless you. That was such an insightful Sabbath school program. Wouldn't you agree, Sister Denisha? Certainly, I agree. It is almost time for the Lord to come, brethren. But what does this mean, Chrisanne? Well, for those of us who have already accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, it means it is time to look up for our redemption draweth nigh. That's right. But for those of us who have not yet accepted him, it means it's time to run for your lives. 
Run to Jesus before it is too late. And trust me, friends, it is the best decision you could ever make. For those of us who've already made that, don't you agree? Amen. For every day with Jesus is? Amen. Amen indeed. Now we transition to our divine service. And we invite you all to share the link and tell a friend to come and see a man. Tell them he is the blessed hope and has great things in store for them. Amen. So at this time, our praise team will lead us into our song service. So we invite you to blend with them your voices as we sing and glorify the mighty name of Jesus. you I love you I love you Lord today because you care for me in what such a special way that's why I'll praise you and I'll lift you up I'll magnify your name because my heart is filled with praise happy Sabbath again everybody are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning Come on, those of us who weren't here this morning when we say good morning, can I see you raise your hands and just praise the Lord? Can I see you raise those hands and say hallelujah? God is worthy to be praised as we sing this lovely song. For I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me In such a special way That's why I praise you I lift you up And magnify your name That's why my heart is filled with praise Can we do that one more time? I love you I love you I love you I love you I love you, Lord, today. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me in such a special way. Such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, raise your hands as we sing. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me in such a special way. In such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. I magnify your name. Your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. We're going to do it one more time. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me in such a special way. Such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. why my heart is filled with praise I love you Lord come on sing it out for your mercies never fail me come on sing all my days I've been held I've been held in your hands from the moment from the moment that I Till I lay my head, I will sing, I will sing of the goodness of God. If God has been good to you, come on, stand to your feet as we sing all my life. All my life, you have been faithful. If God has been faithful to you, raise those hands and give my praise this morning. All my life, you have been so, so. Good. 
goodness of God. We're going to take the first verse again. I love you. I love you, Lord, for your mercies. For your mercies never fail me. All my days, all my days, I've been held in your hands. I've been held in your hands. Your hands from the moment that I wake up. Moment that I wake up. Until I lay my head. Of the goodness of God. For all my life you have been faithful. Sing it out. For all my life you have been faithful. All my life you've been so good. God. Your goodness, your goodness is running after, running after me. Running after me. Your goodness, your goodness is running after, is running after me. To me, with my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness. Is running after, is running. Can I see the worshipers this morning? If God has been good to you, your goodness is running after. Come on, worship the Lord this morning. Give Him a praise. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness, your goodness is running after, is running after me. Oh, your goodness is running after, your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness, Lord, your goodness is running after, is running after me. With my life, with my life laid down. You have been so good. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath, with every breath that I am able, I will sing, I will sing of the goodness of God, of God. Oh, I will sing. Of the goodness of God, I will sing. Yes, I will sing. Of the goodness of God. For I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. Because, because you care for me in such a special way, in such a special way. That's why I praise you, I lift you up, I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, someone just raise those hands and praise the Lord this morning. Come on, just take a moment and give God some praise in the house this morning. I don't know what you've been through this week. But if God has been good to you, just take a moment and just worship Him. Give Him all the glory, all the praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. That's why we've got to sing our theme song, Worthy, 
thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame in love, you came and you gave amazing grace. We're all going to stand together as we sing our theme song. This is the last Sabbath we'll be singing this song in this fashion. So let's put our everything in it. Everybody, everywhere, as long as they're able to stand, please stand. Thank you for the prize. Thank you for the prize you paid. Bearing on my sin and shame. In love you came. And gave amazing grace. Gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail pierced hand. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know is your forgiveness. Treasure of heaven, treasure of heaven, crucified. Sing worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. the Lord. Indeed, the Lamb of God is worthy. Uh, this beautiful Sabbath day, I am here wearing many caps 
The first caps, um, cap that I'm wearing is uh, logistics team. Would like to ask all the persons with bags on chairs um, to just, you know, be very considerate and help some of those who do not have chairs to, to have a seat. And we're asking for that. Again, gentlemen, we're asking that you, you know, if you see a lady that needs to sit and you are able to give your seat away, uh, uh, just being a gentleman for today is okay. And uh, we're asking you to kindly do that. Members, if you see visitors without seat, be very kind and give that visitor a seat, right? Um, are we on the same page? All right. It's the last Sabbath and we are going to get it right. No, true. We're going to get it right. And God has been tremendously good to us. I want to take this opportunity to invite all our new converts, uh, well, all our candidates for baptism today. You're a candidate for baptism. We're asking that the Bible counselors and the candidates for baptism, you know where to meet us, underneath the smaller tent. We want you to meet us there right now, right now, so that we can prepare for the baptismal service. Um, it, is, it brings me joy and the pleasure to acknowledge the presence of our, our, the East Jamaica Conference um, admin representative or treasurer, Elder Michael Porteous, and with him is our assistant to the personal ministries and the Sabbath school director, um, Elder Denise Brown. They are with us, and we are happy to have them. Are you happy to have them here with us today? Oh, come on. We've got to do a little bit better than that. Are you happy to have them with us? Oh, yes, we are happy to have them, and indeed, we want to hear from them. They are going to bring greetings from the administration, from our conference, and we know that we will enjoy their presence in worship this Sabbath. Um, it's going to be glorious. So, handing over to um, Elder Michael Porteous right now as we take greetings from them. Happy Sabbath, church. It's my delight to worship with the church of the living God. What do you say? Amen. And God has been good to you. God has been good to me. As I was coming this morning, I didn't realize that I had to put a little extra pressure on the tooting of my horn and the pressing of the brake because the devil wanted to pull a fast one on me this morning. But praise God, I am here. Praise God, you are here. It is because of his grace and his mercies while we are still walking on top of our graves. What do you say? And so it's my delight on behalf of the administration of the East Jamaica Conference to bring greetings today. You know our president. He has been out here before. Pastor Merrick Walker and our executive secretary, Pastor Melvin Francis and our vice president, Pastor Carl Cunningham. And today I have with me from the office Sister Denise Brown who will come shortly and share in the goodness of God as we worship together. I want you to know that we are fully with you and I'm so happy to see that every seat is taken because everyone brought a visitor with him or her. Praise God. What do you say? The most important decision, and I believe I saw Pastor Samuel Lewis earlier. Pastor Samuel Lewis, praise God, still on the mission field. Sister Lewis, good to see you as well as we worship and fellowship. I want to salute the ministers in this campaign, Pastor RuPaul Livingston and Pastor Sean Edwards for the good work they have been doing and certainly not without you. Every elder, every board member, every regular member that has done his or her part, we want to salute you for keeping the flame alive. This is what we are here for, to rescue men and women from the kingdom of the devil and to populate heaven 
because we want them to be there with us. So as we worship, let us make this an opportunity for someone to receive the saving grace of Jesus Christ. May God continue to bless each one of us as we celebrate his goodness, as we celebrate his grace that keeps running after us. My sister, come and share in the goodness of God this morning. Shall we bless the Lord, church? Amen. Shall we bless the Lord again, people of God? Amen. God is bless good. All the and time. all the time, God, God is, is good. certainly good. No, you might be wondering, how is it you're seeing my face for the final Sabbath? But better late than? Right. God would have been so exceptionally good to us. And today, I want to greet you in the mighty in the precious, in the only name on the earth wherein men, women, boys, and girls can exalt God because there is none other like him. So on behalf, as Elder Portis and Rhoda rightly stated, on behalf of Pastor Anthony Ball, the Sabbath School Director, I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray that as you continue to worship under the Blessed Hope Evangelistic Series today, that you'll just exalt God. You'll just say, honor him. You'll just praise him because there is none other like our God. Isn't he worthy to be praised, church? Praise the Lord. And God will have been using his manservant evangelist, Jeffrey Harriet. And today is no exception. So as we continue to praise God, I pray that you will forget about yourself, concentrate on him, and worship God because he's worthy of our praises. I bless you, I honor, and it's a great privilege to share with you in this capaci capacity. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Please listen to the following announcements for Sabbath, March 30th, 2024. Please be advised that the EJC head office at 74 Canton Spring Road will reopen for regular operations on Tuesday, April 2, 2024 at 8.30 a.m. The administration apologizes for any inconvenience caused. The EJC Family Ministries Department, in association with the Whitehall Avenue SDA Church, will be hosting their singles brunch tomorrow, March 31st, at the UCC main campus between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. EJC Stewardship, Planned Giving and Wills, and Trust Services Department, Wealth Building Members Empowerment Forum, continues this Tuesday, April 2, on the EJC Zoom platform at 6.30 p.m. The Zoom credentials will be shared in your church's WhatsApp group. The 13th anniversary service for Girls of Eloquence, Morals and Standards, GEMS, will be held at the Kencott SDA Church on April 6, 2024, all zones are expected to be in attendance. The EJC's communication department presents a communication workshop on Sunday, April 7, 2024, beginning at 9 a.m. in the EJC's boardroom. The Yalas Women's Ministry will be having their Mother's Day dinner on May 12, 2024, at the Conroy Kenton Auditorium, beginning at 3 p.m. Persons interested in purchasing tickets may reach out to Sisters L. Porteous, I. Melbourne, C. Kenton, and F. Lee Phillips. The Philadelphia SDA Church will be having their Youth Day on Sabbath, June 15, 2024, starting at 9 a.m. under the theme Ignite a blazing praise, 
Please come out and let us have a wonderful time in the Lord. The Woodburn SDA Men's Ministries Annual Fish Fry will be held on April 1st, 2024, right on the church grounds between the hours of 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. Please call or WhatsApp your orders to 876-561-0509 or 876-883-1110. This evening, starting at 7 p.m., you are all invited to the Grand Gospel Concert. You can't afford to miss it. Don't be selfish. Invite a friend or two to come along with you. The Blessed Hope Evangelistic Series culminates tomorrow, March 31st. These are the announcements for today. Have a blessed Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Shall we stand for prayer? Our Father and great God, hallowed be your most holy and precious name. Father, we glorify you. We magnify your name, which is above every name. Lord, that at your name every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that you are Lord and Master of all. Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercies because it is your grace and mercies that has brought us through. We are living each moment because of you. We want to praise you and to thank you for your grace and your mercies. Lord, we thank you for having brought us into your courts once again. Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Many are the blessings that you have given unto us. Blessings overflowing like a mighty sea. Lord, we want to thank you for your love for us. Lord, had it not been for you, had it not been that you cared, had it not been that you went all the way to Calvary, to die in our stead, that our souls which were so unworthy can live. Lord, the path to the cross, you are willing to thread all the sins of our life to forgive. Lord, we do not take for granted the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Lord, we thank you this morning that our senses are intact. Our mental faculty is also intact. Lord God, we are here to lift up and to magnify your name. Today, God, as we worship you, help us to worship you in spirit and in truth because these are the days when you desire it such. Lord, we ask that as we worship, you'll help us to forget about self, forget about the trials and the tribulation, concentrate on you, and worship you in the beauty of holiness. Lord, we need you now more than ever. Because we recognize that the devil is walking about like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. But God, this morning we know that you are the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. And you will break every chain. Lord, and give us the victory again and again so this morning we come to tell the devil that he is a defeated foe that our god is able to do all things lord we pray god for every person that is under this tent cathedral that lord god you will pour us a double portion of your holy spirit upon us continue to provide for us jesus Lord God, and continue to help us to hold on to your unchanging hands. Lord, we recognize that the struggles are real. Lord, we know the battle is hot. We know the conflicts are sore. But Lord, though rocky the road, Lord, we'll continue to hold on to you, Jesus. Lord, we know that you, are, you can fight the battle for us. The songwriter said, if we hold our peace 
and let the Lord fight the battle, then victory shall be ours. Lord, we pray that everything that will be said and done this morning will be said and done to your name's honor and glory. Lord, we pray for every person that will minister today. Lord, more so our evangelist. Lord, you know him. Lord, you know how much he has poured himself out in this crusade. Lord, we pray, God, that you'll anoint him afresh this morning. That, Lord God, you will give him a double portion of your Holy Spirit. Oh, God, that you continue to abide with him and his family and all his support. Lord God, we pray, Jesus, that as he minister, that souls, Lord God, within the hearing of his voice, will come saying, I healed, I heal. I cannot hold it out any longer. Lord, continue to be with us. Continue to guide us. Lord, and continue to hold us so close till we feel your heartbeat. And do not allow us to wander away from thee. Lord, back back every force of evil, the plans of the devil, and give us the victory. For we humbly wait upon you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Now, it is indeed my privilege, brothers and sisters, to welcome you once more. This the final Sabbath of our Blessed Hope Evangelistic Series. Indeed, it has been a wonderful experience. What do you have to say? Amen, amen. amen. I have been blessed so far. And, you know, it is with some bit of sadness within my heart. But I'm also excited and happy and elated because there are individuals who have decided to give their lives over to God. Amen. 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 And so I want to welcome you all, brothers and sisters. And I want to make a special welcome to all those who are worshiping with us from the Woodburn District of Seventh-day Adventist Churches. And if you are here, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Amen. To God be praised. And a special welcome also to those who are worshiping with us from the Yalas District of Seventh-day Adventist Churches. And if you are here, let me hear you shout praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is indeed worthy to be praised. And so, brothers and sisters, as our praise team are here to sing the fellowship song with us, I want us to give it everything because what? We are on our way to heaven, and because we are on our way to heaven, what are we going to do? Clap our hands. If we are on our way to heaven, what are we going to do? Clap our hands. And that is indeed what we are going to do because we are going to praise the Lord. We are going to clap our hands. We are going to stamp our feet because we are going to be fellowshipping together because God is indeed worthy to be praised. Come on, everybody. Let's put those hands together. If you're on your way to heaven, clap your hands. If your sins have been forgiven, clap your hands. Point to heaven in the sky, then shake hands with all their minds. If you're happy on the way, clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. If you're on your way to heaven, clap your hands. Watch me now. If you're not ashamed of Jesus, raise your hands. If you're taking a stand for Jesus, take a stand. Stand up, everybody. Now sit down and rest a while. Turn to someone with a smile. If you're happy all the while, clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. If you're on your way to heaven, clap your hands. If you're not ashamed of Jesus, raise your hand. And if you're taking a step for Jesus, take a step. Now sit down and listen to the water, to someone with a smile. If you're happy on the wild, clap your hand. Clap your hand. Clap your hand. If you're on your way to heaven, clap your hand. If you're on your way to heaven, clap your hand. Because if you're on your way to heaven, clap your hand. If you're on your way to heaven, clap your hands. If you're on your way to heaven, clap your hands. And if you're on your way to heaven, clap your hands. Amen. Glory. 
It is so nice to be on our way to heaven. That is so awesome. We are just tremendously blessed today, and the blessing keeps coming. It keeps coming. Um, we have with us today uh, a man who has fought on the battlefield of St. Thomas so many times and all over the world, and, and, and he is a man who is experienced battle-hardened. Uh, we are happy to have Evangelist Noel jump with us, and we want to hear from him. We want to hear him share with us um, today. And um, I'm sure, Evangelist, many persons are here today because of how God has used you in the past. And so we are delighted to ha have you, and we want to hear from you. Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath. The Lord is good. Bye. And all the time. Bye. I like what I'm seeing here. I love what I'm seeing here. We are working for Jesus. Come on, church. We are working for Jesus. The Bible, the songwriter says, Working, O Christ, with you. And God has given us a mission and a vision to have this series here. And many precious souls have been won for the kingdom. But I'm glad this morning that as I stand here and as I see you, I know that as the Bible says to us, He that will come, will come and will not tarry. So the Lord is saying, we ought to remain connected to the true vine. What is his name? Jesus Christ of Galilee. He says to us this morning, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Where? That where I am, there ye may be also. We are not in, in, in well-doing. Keep the faith. Hold on to Jesus. Because he that shall come will come. And for whom is he coming today? For me. Who is he coming for church? For me. May God bless our evangelists and continually bless you. I was hearkened just a moment ago as I came onto the stage. That someone spoke to me and said, you see this little lady here? She was baptized the last time you were here. Come on church. She's holding on to Jesus. All people, let us hold on to Jesus because soon and very soon, finish it, church, we shall see the King. Well, there's a light in the window, the table spread in splendor, and someone standing by the open door. I can see the crystal river, oh, it must be there forever, and I've never been this home seen before. The family gather, sweet faces all familiar, and no one's 
hold of fever anymore. And my lonesome heart is crying. I'm gonna spread my wings for flying. And I've never been this home see before. time for our children's story with will all children come up for it's now your time for your story Jesus loves the little children all the children of the world red and yellow black or white all are precious in his sight Jesus loves the little children of the children all the children of the world red and yellow black and white all are precious in his sight Jesus loves the little children of the world Sabbath boys and girls no man it's too much of people are not for me not to be hearing you Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Much better. Happy Sabbath, bigger boys and girls. Well, I have here some, a tip for us parents. It says, parents, please help your children to build their faith so they can know that they can always turn to God for help. Comfort and strength. Also, pray with them, as that is how they will learn to pray for themselves. They will know that less of self and more of God. Our story this morning, children, is love people, then help them. Who love people and then help them? Which one of you will love people? Wow. Nice. 
It says, a uh, great surgeon lived in Jamaica. He was also a medical person. He was a true physician who, in that he not only had superlative skills, but also loved people and went, uh, went about to do good. He became deeply interested in, the little, in a little crippled boy. And you know, boys and girls, Sister Morgan loved when you listen. So you are too? Nice. He was interested in a crippled newsboy at the corner where he regularly brought his newspaper from. The boy was a bright little boy. And one day the surgeon told him, Johnny, would you like to have me cure that leg of yours so that you could run and play with other boys? The little boy replied, yes, I would. The doctor agreed to do it out of love and not for money. Oh, doctor, that would make me so happy, replied the little boy. At the operation theater, before he was administered with something to sleep, the boy wanted to pray. What did he want to do? Pray. pray. And that's what I told your parents to help you to do. Pray, right. God, he prayed aloud. God, grant the surgeon a long life so that he may save the lives of many other people. The prior touched the heart of the surgeon, and later he commented, In my life, I've lived and operated so many people occupying very high positions and received fabulous amounts for such operations, but I did not get the enormous satisfaction that I did when I operated on this boy. What was that? The prior, he wanted to pray before the surgeon did the surgery on him. A simple act of love and serve it without any expectation is far superior to any amount of money. Children who hear praise in the morning. Wow. Who hear praise at night before you go to bed. And Sister Morgan is telling each and every one of us right now that we must pray at all times because God hears and answers prior. Wasn't that a lovely story? Love people and then you can help them. And to do that, you have to always pray because without prayer, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And right now I want a bright child to pray. And before I even finish talking, there is a young one who wants to pray. Let us close our eyes. It, it's time to talk to God. It's time to talk to God. I know he hear we pray. It's time to talk to God. Dear God, thank you for waking us this morning. Thank you for carrying us to church. We are going to praise your name, and we are we going to praise you in, in your holy name. Amen. Amen. At this point in time, we are at the point where I know that you're reminded by the song that says what? If you're on the way to heaven, what? No, my yes, so let me believe it at all. If you're on the way to heaven, what? Let us try it for me, please. If you're on the way to heaven, what? Very good. And we can definitely clap our hands right now. Because we are coming to an end to this campaign. We're not clapping because we are saying we are glad it is finishing. No. But we are clapping because we are saying we are not going to end this campaign, Treasurer, with any form of financial deficit. Amen? You should be clapping again. You should be clapping again. Amen? And so at this point in time, I'm here to just speak to you about the offering. And just to give you something specific so you know exactly what we're working with. Because I know you are people who, when you go to the supermarket and you go to buy anything, you know exactly what amount of money you need to walk with. Am I correct? You don't know. Oh, so sometimes you go and, and the cost of things are a little bit higher than that, that you expect it to be. But you normally walk with a basic budget. Am I correct? 
And I know that most of you today, you walk with a basic budget. Amen. And I want to just give you some information. All we need right now to close this campaign and not look behind us in any form of this trepidation and the fear that there's something lagging behind financially. We only need just about $200,000. I hear the church say amen. And I hear someone saying, Elder, are that you really are talking about $200,000? So as you're about to give right now, we are giving just enough so we can have exactly $200,000 being collected right now. And so what we're going to do while they are singing, we'll be calculating what we have, and when we get back, we're going to let you know we were able to get what? $200,000 from all of us today. For those who are online, I don't want you to be left out. You'll see on screen that you'll always see that the banking information is there. You can also make your contribution. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for what we are about to receive right now. You, Lord, would have blessed us in so much. But Lord, at this time, we are going to give back so much to you. Because you have been grateful. We, Lord, are also going to be grateful. As the Lord, we call it the orphan right now. We are seeking just $200,000, Jesus. So we can end this campaign and definitely say we are on our way to heaven. We can clap our hands, Jesus. We leave here rejoicing. In your son, Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks. Amen and amen.
singular honor and delight is mine this morning to introduce God's manservant, the conduit who God has been for this past four weeks. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it is my delight to introduce the man that is sounding the trumpet. It is my delight to introduce the voice of God in the wilderness. The singular delight is mine to let men and women know that God has a word for us to, today. And so without further ado, the man that God has is international evangelist, elder Jeffrey Paul Harriet. And so hear he him, I crave for him your undivided attention but just before he comes to speak to our hearts, we'll have the praise team who will sing a special song. And then the next voice will be that of God's manservant. We are just holding on for one second. God is good. One, two, three. The worship can't be too enough. What do you say? for the word but the preacher is still in preparation so let's give him just another two minutes he just got here so we're going to worship the Lord with the song for you I faced a mountain that I never faced before That's why I'm calling on the Lord I know it's been a while But Lord, please hear my cry I need you like I never have before a mountain Sometimes the trouble sea Sometimes it takes a desert To get a hold of me Your love is so much stronger than whatever troubles me. Sometimes it takes a mountain. 
to trust you and believe. Forgive me, Jesus. Thought I could control whatever life was thrown my way. But this I will admit has brought me to my knees and now I need you Lord and I'm not ashamed to say sometimes it takes a mountain sometimes a trouble to see To get a hold of me, but I know your love is so much stronger than whatever troubles be. Sometimes it takes. To trust you and believe yeah. Sometimes it takes a mountain Sometimes the trouble sees Sometimes it takes a desert to get a hold of me, to get a hold, get a hold of me. Lord, your love is so much stronger than whatever troubles me. Sometimes it takes. To trust you and believe For your love is so much stronger Somebody shout hallelujah. Yes, somebody shout amen. Yes. Any mountain in your way. Any mountain in your way. He's going to move them. Today, somebody is fighting. There is somebody under the tent today fighting. And what I pray that God will release you today. Make you ready and fit for his kingdom. Somebody shout hallelujah. And somebody else say amen. Ah, God is good. Because there's a river this morning that never shall run dry.
Are you ready for the word? Not yet. <laughs> the word is ready, but the <laughs> one more. Can we do one more for you?
for my sake just to teach me to take one day at a time. Come on, sing with us. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking of you. Just to give me the strength to do every day what I had to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. So Lord, for my sake, come on, teach me to take one day at a time. Can I see your hands this morning? If you're asking the Lord to just give you one day at a time, that's all He asks of us. Listen. Do you remember, Lord, when you walked on this land? Well, Jesus, you know. now than then there's a pushing and shoving Lord there's a violence and crime oh but for my sake won't you teach me to take one day at a time oh Lord one day at a time sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking of you. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. For yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. So Lord, for my sake, come on, teach me to take one day at a time. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I, I just feel impressed to tell you this this morning. You, you see me here and um, my, my, my voice is sounding very strong. Three years ago, I could not do that. I almost lost my voice completely because of an internal illness I did not know I had. But thanks be to God, it wasn't what they were looking for. God put it somewhere else where I could manage. I'm on medication, but I'm giving God thanks. I'm not back to 100%. But God is blessing me every day. What do you say? So do you remember, Lord, when you walked on this land? Well, Jesus, you know, if you're the king below, Lord, it's worse now than then. There's a pushing and shoving. Crime. Oh, but for my sake, won't you teach me to take one day at a time? Oh, Lord, one, one day, day at a time. time. Sweet Jesus, I've had so I'm asking of you just to give me the strength. To do every day what I had to do. Oh, yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. So, so Lord, for my sake, come on, teach me to take one day at a time. Lord, for my 
sing, come on, teach me to take one day at a time. Oh, Lord, for my sake, come on, teach me to take Lord, one, one day. Amen. Stay right there. Stay right there. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. Do you know that you serve a mighty God? I don't think you understand. Do you understand we serve a mighty God? Do we understand that no matter what you need, when you trust in God, He can provide? So guess what? I'm here to tell you because you trust in God, because I know I trust in God, I ask for only what? $200,000. You said one day at a time. One day at a time. That is what we do on the stand. That is what we do as a seventh day at Christian. Christian. We trust God what? One day at a time. We may not have millions, but we trust Him what? One dollar at a time. And so, treasure, you can go back to the conference and let them know. If they want to learn how to collect funds, they need to come to Yalas. If they want to know how to balance the budget, they need to come to Yalas. And we can teach you how to get it done. If you want to have an overflow in your budget, just come to Yalas District. Come to the Woodburn District. We can teach you how it is done. Because now we have a total of $242,000. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. One day at a time for me. One day at a time. One day at a time. Let us pray. Father, today, we are giving you all the glory. We're giving you all the praises because, Lord, we trust you one yes. day at a time. Lord, we have proven today once more that, Lord, we are depending on you. And whatever, Lord, you have given to us, we give it back to you in faith. Because we know, Lord, you can replenish that for us. Today, Lord, we give you thanks. We ask you, Lord, for a specific amount. But Lord, you said no. You are giving us an overflow. So we thank you, Lord, for all of those who gave Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for those who have calculated Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for everything you have done for us. We continue, Lord, to praise you. We continue, Lord, to praise you. Amen and amen. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the last thing I forgot to tell you while my praise team is coming up. You see, when I was going through my, my problems, I, I went to the doctor. I went to see an ENT specialist because I thought my system was going bad. He asked me, what do you do for a living? I said to him, by profession, I'm a teacher. By calling, I'm a minister. I'm a singing evangelist. He said, well, teaching is the day-to-day -day money. So that's your living. But you can put aside the other one for the time being. <laughs> I said to him, I prefer to stop going to the classroom. Give God the praise, everybody. I, I have worked in so many crusades thereafter. In the days I teach, in the evenings, I get enough strength, enough voice to take me through praise and worship. God is a good God. And it doesn't matter what circumstances there, there are in your lives. God can open the ways for you so that you can be a blessing to others. Amen. And this morning, we may, we, may not, we may not all be well. We are looking at each other, but we may not all be well. But we need to give God all the praise and all the glory because we are here this morning. We are standing on top of our graves. And for that we can stand together as we sing our meditation song. Wonderful, merciful Savior. Precious what? Redeemer and friend. You are the one that we praise. You are the one that is giving us a grace this morning. Let's all stand together as we sing our meditation song as we prepare for the word this morning 
It's getting hot inside here. Oh, and yeah, we don't want to be here. We want to be at a better place, amen? It's getting hot down here now. And the judgment isn't here yet. So you better be ready. Somebody say amen. the souls of men oh you rescue the souls of men count the comforter keeper spirit we long to embrace you offer hope of your people when everything is said and done we ask that to your names only all praise and honor will go to now let the words of my mouth and the silent 
meditation of all hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And all God's people say, Sabbath, everybody. God is certainly a good God. He has been so good to us. What do you say? We started just about four weeks ago, and God brought us through many dangers, toil, and snares. And we have come. We are so grateful and uh, and appreciative of the all that you have done and what you will continue to do this is just the beginning of a fight a war and a battle that the devil will rage on god's church but i believe by the grace of god as we allow him to fight our battles for us we will become victors what do you say let me ace to let's a few persons know how grateful we are to have them here today. And so I know I am not seen, but I was told that the father of one of the pastors, which is my good friend, Elder Livingston, who is the father of Pastor Livingston, is here with us. I'm going to ask him to stand at this time and be acknowledged. All right, come on, turn the camera on him. Let the world see the man who has produced, along with his beautiful wife, a champion for Jesus. It was good to have you. Put your hands again, together for him. Give him some love. Give him some love. We bless you. Bring back greetings to your church. He is the first elder, I guess, from the Rollins Field, Seventh-day Adventist Church. We give God thanks for you, sir. We have the entire family of the Cummings here today. I'm going to ask Brother Cummings to stand along with the family. Oh, Sister Cummings joined us. Well, well, they're standing there. Come on, turn the camera on the Cummings family. We're so happy to have them. Bless your heart, sir. And we appreciate the love gift you gave to us as we helped to defray the cost that we had. And I use the word had out here. Amen, somebody? To God with the glory. Sister Cummings is one of the Bible instructors who have worked tirelessly and so hard and uh, we appreciate our service amen somebody we appreciate all the bible instructors they're coming from far and they will be in, heading back home to their family on monday we ask for journey mercies on the abf there is a lady who has been watching every night i heard she's sitting somewhere in my left uh, she's here today i don't know who she be so if you have been watching Every night and you're here for the first time, I'm going to ask you please to stand. Please to stand. Well, I guess uh, I'm seeing somebody else too. Uh, I, I see, is that uh, Pastor Livingston and sister or niece or something? Standing in the aisle. I, I'm not sure. I know her from Portland. Sister? Yes. How could I, how could he forget to tell me to recognize my friend? Good to see you. Good to see you. And if you notice, we see Pastor 
uh, Phillips and this beautiful wife is coming in. Our prayer coordinator or direct co coordinator for the conference, uh, a director for the conference, Sister Phillips, good to have you. I'm looking in the congregation and I'm noticing there's another person. Let me acknowledge first, Carl Borland. We want to let you know, I heard you have been watching and you're home out of the hospital. We give God thanks for you and we thank you as we continue to pray for you. I, I noticed that my good friend, I don't know if she want me to mention her name, but we were together just a few months ago in Philadelphia. Uh, I'm telling them your business now. At that particular church, Sister Nadi, uh, Andrea Francis, she's in the house. Could you stand and be acknowledged? Nadine is right here behind her. She called me and told me that she will be in the place. Uh, I good put your hands together for them. And uh, is, is, is my friend is here too? Claudia is here? Hold on. Did I forget who Claudia looked like? The last time we spoke, you were in England, right? So you flew all the way down. So you, you're a little different now, but we've got to talk later on. So all my friends are here. I remember those days when we used to, younger days in, at Yalas, and we met three sisters. And today we are friends and continue to be friends. Let me move quickly. Time is going. I noticed that you acknowledge I was online and that you acknowledge uh, Evangelist Jump, my friend and brother, old veteran when it comes to evangelism. Put your hands together for him. I need to acknowledge him personally. And uh, we, we have with us one of our administrators, uh, pa I could say pastor, uh, Elder Michael Porteous. I, I don't know if you know how far we have been coming from. I won't tell them. But uh, I, 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 we're happy to have you, sir, as you. I, I wonder in my mind, when were you coming? Because you normally support all the meetings I have. So I, I said to myself, maybe he's waiting for the last. But indeed, he's, he's here before it's end. Amen? I notice his wife is not here because if his wife was here, she would have been sitting beside him. That much I know. So... Unfortunately, I'm unable to was able to go, unable to go for my wife, but she's online. We just want to let her know that we love her and appreciate her support. Uh, <laughs> and I can't help but also acknowledge the Lewis's family, Pastor and Sister Lewis. They have been a tower of strength to me. Uh, I remember when I was at Riverton. Pastor Linton Williams and his beautiful wife, they were there with me every night and every Sabbath. And they remind me of the, 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 the Linton's family, the Williams family. Sister Lewis and Pastor Lewis have been here every night. And we continue to pray for Pastor Williams as well. Oh, Lord, the devil is a liar. We're going to ask if there's a nurse in the house. Please, could you join me in the vestry? Uh, at this time, any nurse in the house, please join me in the vestry at this time. The devil is a liar. The prayer team, get in the prayer room and start praying. Time waits on nobody. I know we have visitors coming for the first time. Uh, some I don't know, some I know. <laughs> but we want to acknowledge all our visitors. Come on, all our visitors, put your hands together for them. Put your hands together for them. Those who are online and those who are in-house. And uh, we give God thanks for all of them. What do you say? Amen. I know that my friend, who, uh, she, she's, I don't see her here. Is, is, uh, she got married on Friday. Uh, what's her name again? Kadian? She's here? Oh, she's around here? She's the one who needs the prayer? Okay. Oh, she's getting ready. Okay. All right. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, congratulations to you, sir. Oh, husband to the back. Oh, that's your sister. <laughs> Lord, have, I get myself in trouble now, don't it? <laughs> if you have allowed your Bibles to come along with you, I invite you to take them out. And we will be turning to the book of Genesis. Genesis. Genesis chapter 12, and we'll be standing for... The reading of his word. Genesis chapter 12. We'll be reading verses number 1 all the way through to number 5. 
And I'll be reading from the King James Version. You can go ahead and follow in whatever version you have. Let us all stand for the reading of his word. If you can't flip it, you can scroll it. If you can't scroll it, you can swipe it. When you're there, let me hear you say amen. Genesis, that's the last book of the Bible. Am I right? What is it? I need your attention, so I had to do that. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through to number 5. Can we go together? Now the Lord had said unto who? Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee. And curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. Lot went with him. And Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haram. Five and last together. And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered. And he sold that they have gotten in Haram. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. The grass withers, the flowers fades, but the word of God stands forever. Amen. Kindly be seated in the presence of our Lord. I forget to acknowledge, was it Pastor Sadiqi who did the introduction? Is he still here? Oh, is he still here? It's good to have the publishing director from the conference and the pastor for the Rollintown District of Churches and also a friend of the evangelist. I rebaptized his mother in the Cayman Islands a few years ago and he, she has adopted me as a son. So Pastor Sadiq has become a brother to the family and he's a friend of the preacher. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you on board to the, to the penultimate flight of the Blessed Hope in-house, an online series that is destined to glory. Amen. This flight will be taking us to an altitude of 42,000 feet in the, in the Lord with a panoramic view and an inspirational insight into the Word of God. So take a moment, if you please, to ensure that your spiritual seat belts our seatbelt is securely fastened while the prayer warriors and the tech team prepare us for takeoff. In fact, while we're on the runway of life, I want to, want, you, want to share a few safety tips with you in case of any emergency. For the next few minutes, under the, the caption, run for your life. Say that with me. Run for your life the book of genesis which is the book of beginnings authored by moses as well as the books of leviticus numbers and exodus accurately traces the lineage as well as the genetic and historical background of abraham abraham who was abram and abram who in the Hebrew language means exalted father. And Sarah, who was Sarai. And Sarai in the Hebrew origin means princesses. And Lot, who was the son of Abraham's brother. And his wife, whose name was not recorded. As for Abraham's brother's son, wife, to whom there is no name, 
happened to be the topic of this paragraph. According to her marital status and her historical background, she happened to be Mrs. Lott. What's her name? Mrs. Lott, who is the wife of Abraham's brother's son, whose descendants is from one of the finest families of the East. And it is interesting to note that Miss Lot, rather, Lot shared the tremendous faith of his uncle and prayed at Abraham's altar. So when the call came for Abraham to get out of his own country and out of his father's house, he packed and he lived. For in order for God to connect with Abraham, he had to disconnect him from families, from friends, and even him own self. And so in Genesis chapter 13 in verse number uh, 12 and 13, it is recorded in the facts of history that Abraham dwell in the land of Canaan and Lot dwell in the cities of the plains and pitched his tent towards Sodom. Verse 13, and the men of Sodom were wicked. What they were? Talk back to the preacher. They were wicked and sinful before the Lord exceedingly. So Abraham moved into a mountain of the east of Bethel and pitched his tent having Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And that's where he built an altar unto the Lord where he could lift up his eyes unto the hills from whence cometh his help. His help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And so Lot pitched his tent towards Sodom. Where did Lot pitch his tent? Can hear you say it one more time. Lot pitched his tent towards where? And according to the Torah, the kingdom of Sodom and Gomorrah, aligned with the cities Hadma, Zebom, and Bela. And uh, these cities were also known as the cities of the plain that was situated on the Jordan River in the south, southern region of the, the land of Canaan. And the plains of Sodom and Gomorrah corresponds to the area just north of the modern Dead Sea. That's where, and that's where we could compare with the Garden of Eden. And because it was blooming every day with new possibilities, everybody wanted to live there. Yeah, for it was blooming every day with new possibilities and therefore it had much potential for investors. Everybody wanted to be there. In fact, Lot stood as a man of good intention. Are you hearing me? Quite obviously, he did not plan to take his family into the sinful environment of Sodom. But he was only planning to live in the vicinity of Sodom where he could take advantage of the economy. He had no idea, listen to me carefully, he had no idea of giving up his religion. Let me say that again. He had no idea of giving up his religion. But in spite of the wonderful intentions he had, he lost his wife, he lost his son-in-law's, his possessions, and almost his own life. And so the word would have us to know that good intentions, they're not good enough. And so what happened was he moved closer and closer towards the city until finally he actually moved into the city to dwell with the Sodomites. With all the wonderful intentions that he had, which is to guard the spiritual interests of his family, failed to materialize. Mrs. Lot not only moved into Saddam, but Saddam moved into her. And so God paid, I want you to listen to me carefully, God paid Abraham a visit. And the visit was about his nephew, and his family. Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him, saying, As for you, behold my 
covenant is with you. Thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her Sarai any more, but thy name shall be Sarah. And I will bless her and give thee a son also to her. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. And she, fell, she shall be the only woman for thee. Then Abraham said, Ask God what was on his mind. And so God was pulled into a conversation by a mere man. God, and so he got straight to the point and said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great and their sin is very grievous before me, I shall destroy all of them. Even the babes on the breast. I said I shall destroy all of them. Even the babes on the breast. Don't tell me that your children are too young to die. If he, for if hell is preparing to take them at any age. Heaven is preparing to take them at any age also. And Abraham challenged God. Did you hear me? Abraham challenged God by saying, Shall not the God of all the earth do right trust? Which means if there is anything that is going wrong down here, we are attributing it to you. We are holding you accountable. Because you are God. And there is none like you. So this is my question. Have you ever been through some stuff that have you wonder if God really exists? I want you to talk back to me today. And so this was God inviting Abraham to pray. Not only did God invite Abraham to pray, but he was actually guiding Abraham how to pray. And so what God was doing to Abraham was, I, he said, I chose you, Abraham, so that you can teach your household to do my will and to, to do righteousness and to do justice. So God opens up to Abraham and allow himself to be questioned by Abraham. And Abraham wanted to know what was in the mind of God. And so God opened to a mere man. God was pulled into a conversation with a holy God. Abraham was pulled into a conversation with a holy God. For God did not have to ask Abraham what was on his mind. Because God is omniscient. He knows everything. But Abraham had to ask God what was in his mind. And so God opened up to Abraham to be questioned. And so what Abraham did was to hold God at a standard. You don't get that. I said, Abraham hold God at a standard. Ella Jump, have you ever come across some people who like holding other people to standard when they themselves are not living up to any standard? In Genesis chapter number 18, verses 20 on down, I'll read this for you right now. Listen what the Bible says. And the Lord said, and the Lord said, and the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I, God, will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which is come up unto me. And if not, I will know. God said, if not, I will know. And the men, watch this. The men turned their faces from hence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. 
And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Hear me, Yalas. Hear me, Philadelphia. Hear me, white horses. Hear me, Halbion. Hear me, Woodburn. Hear me, Ramble. Hear me, Somerset. I'm speaking on the behalf of my God. I'm trying to let you understand that God made a promise. He said, Abraham, God, you listen to me. The men turned their face hence and went towards Sodom. But can I tell you, Abraham, yet stand before God. He said, peradventure, will you destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure. I said, peradventure, perhaps you find within the city 50 that is righteous. Will you spare the city for the place of the 50 that we find? Can I tell you that nothing isn't wrong with go into a negotiation with God? Can I talk to you? That's as far from thee to do after this manner. To slay, watch this, the righteous with the wicked. And that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee shall not the judge of all the earth do righteous. And Abraham started with the blame game. I don't want you to start out here with any blame game. This is God's mission. This is God's purpose. This is God's intervention. And whatever God allows, we got to fold our hands and say, God, your will be done. But if you are not a contributing factor to God's success, you need to question yourself. Each of us out here, we are God's mouthpiece. We are God's hands. We are God's feet. And the truth is, no other hands he had but ours. No mouth he had but ours. And so if we speak evil against God's will, we got to give an account. But if you have done your best, good angels in heaven can't do more. Am I speaking the truth? And so the blame game started, Pastor Lewis. And listen to it start. He said, you, you are God. God, you said. Listen to me now. You said, God. Yeah, I'm holding you at your word. You said that weeping may endure. It doesn't sound like you know it. Who said that? Weeping may endure for what? For a night, but joy comes when? You said you are the shepherd and we are your sheep. You said we shall not be in want. You said a thousand shall fall at our side and ten thousand at thy right hand and it shall not come nigh thee. You said when we pass through the waters it will not overflow us. You said, when you go to the fire, we will not be burned, nor the flame kindled on us. You said, no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. You said, out here in Yalas, victory shall be yours. And when the Lord said to Abraham, if you find 50, watch this, within the city that is righteous, I, God made a promise to you, Abraham, that I will spare the city for the sake of 50. Hear me today, church, let me just contemporize it, because in within the, the, the community of Western St. Thomas, we have more than 50. We pitched this tent for four weeks long. We have been preaching just about every night except for Thursdays and Fridays and Saturday nights. And the message have been amplified across the lanes and avenues and roads in Lialis. But how much have you seen so far? We have seen 55 so far. And we have some in gown that are saying, yes, 
But can I tell you, if God can find 50 out here, he said he will spare the city. I don't think God wants 50 or 75 or 100. He wants all of those in the hearing of his voice. And whosoever have here to hear, let him hear. God wants to save his people. God is not particular. He loves everybody. He wants to save everybody. Even the baby on the breast. God wants to save them. You see, there's something you need to understand about God. He says what he means. And he means what he says. Yeah, oh yes, for even within the confines of our space called church. The question is relevant. Can we find 50 within the church? And you ask me preacher because we have some pastors, we have some elders, we just, are they truly righteous? I'm not talking about just being dressed in clothes, coming to church and doing lesser study and reciting memory texts. I'm talking about walking upright, truly godly, personal connection, intimate relationship with God. Church is more than fancy hats and nice suits. Church is more than melodious singing and dynamic preaching church is a place where God meets his people where we have holy communion with God but it's more than just being having veggie burger on our breath and having a dress dragging behind us and knowing the 2300 days prophecy and the 28 fundamental belief it's more than just coming together under a canvas it's more of an intimate relationship with God are you listening to me that is why our lifestyle should not demand respect but it should command respect one shouldn't have to ask if you are a child of God they must see who you are by the fruit that you bear hear me the sermon today the greatest sermon you preach is the life you live let somebody know that Christ must perpetuate in your lifestyle if you follow the footprints of Jesus the devil will tell you I am at the wrong door when he knocks at your heart. And so the challenge is on 50. And to the story, Abraham did all he could, could not find 50. Are you telling me that Sodom and Gomorrah was so wicked? 50 people. Have no time for church. 50 had no. As a matter of fact, the population of Sodom and Gomorrah, I don't remember the quantity, but it was a lot more than what you think. And if only 50 can be found, the message is that the city will be saved. The truth of the matter is, beloved, even inside our church, we hardly find people who are connected to God. I'm talking about 50. Just 50, 50 that is saying, you can take my house, you can take back the car, you can keep your job, but you can't take me from my God. You're not hearing me. 50 that is willing to say, the world behind me, the cross and Christ before me, no turning back, no turning back. Just 50. You're not hearing me. 50. And Abraham could not find 50. Verse 27, the Lord. And so Abraham went and answered and said, Behold, I have taken upon myself to speak unto the Lord, which I'm just a mere dust and ashes. And listen to what the Lord said in verse 29. And he spake and said unto him yet again, Peradventure you'll find 40. And I have you to know the number is reducing. Going down, going down. Just like how the image in Daniel 2 is the, 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 the value of the, of the imagery is decreasing. Devaluing. Yeah, as we get down to the, 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 the chest of arms of silver. You know this gold is more costly than, 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 than silver. Can I tell you, 40 is more, it's less than 50. 50 is more than 40. It is sad to know that we have people inside the church who has letters behind their names, but no connection with God. 
it is sad to say we have qualified people inside the church who are plugged in but they are not connected we have qualified people inside the church who are appointed qualified by man but not qualified by God they are plugged in but they are not connected they are appointed but not anointed we need some men who will not be bought our soul not just to hold office not just to be called leaders we need God fearing men who have love in their heart who have a heart of sympathy who can understand when somebody falls just like the woman who was caught in adultery there must be a second chance and stop talking about fire him cut him off if God had done that to me I couldn't be here preaching to you you know how many of us who are pointing finger when it was the mercy of God who have saved you. We hold off some people up to this day because they make a little mistake in the past. And because you could have seen his, but they couldn't see yours. I, 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 I don't... Uh, this is my last Sabbath so I can preach. And my treasurer is not here to kill me, he's here to support me. Because how we do it, we don't attack people. If I said something I shouldn't be saying, he's not going to come up here and say it and correct me. He's going to wait until I get in the office. He called me into a meeting and said, Ivan, let's go easy next time. But can I say this in front of him and in Pastor Ella Jump and Pastor Phillips, when it comes to God's word, there is no apology. Are you following me? Once you're coming from the word of God, there is no apology. Could not find 40. Hello? Could, let, me, let me jump down the numbers for you quickly. And I'll take you back why I said that. Could not find 30. Couldn't find 20 and 5. Couldn't find 20. I heard that Sister Brown is here. Sorry, I miss you. Bless my heart. Could not find 15. Hello? Hello? Church, you're not hearing me. Could not find 10. You see why some of you are quiet? Some of you just having a form of godliness. There is no power in you. you. Watch those who are quiet. Sometimes they are more sincere than those who are making noise. Can I have you to know beloved. That church they could not find 10. Could not find 10. Listen to what verse 19, 1 to 13 of chapter 19 said. And there came two angels. Came what? Angels are warners. They warned two angels to Saddam and Gomorrah at evening. And to Saddam, brother, at evening. And Lot went in the gate of Saddam and seen, and seen them rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face towards the crowd. And he said, Behold, now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house and tarry all night and wash your feet and he shall rise up early and go on your ways. And he said, Nay, but we will abide in the streets all night. And they pressed upon them greatly and they turned in into unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did break and live in bread and they, he did eat. But before they lay down, listen to me now. The men of the city, even the men of Sodom, come past the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they call unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out that we may know them. Bring them out unto us that we may know them. You didn't get me. Bring them out unto us that we may know them. And know means sexually. Genesis 4 verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. And she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. 
Behold, beloved, I do not broach this subject to be insensitive. The persons who are struggling in this area. But the mistake I think some preachers make in their victory hall, in their shrieking and shouting noise over the den and the dirge of other noises, is to make one sin bigger than the other. I decree and declare without the fear of any successful contradiction that homosexuality and lesbianism is not of God, but it's of the devil. It is not just sin, but it's an abomination in the sight of God. Leviticus 18 verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with the mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Leviticus 9 20 verse 13. If a man lieth also with uh, also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have become committed an abomination. They surely shall be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. And so as preachers, listen to me carefully. As preachers, if we do not preach, hear me now. We, are you listening to me? The whole counsel of God, the way it ought to be preached. We will have to give an account. If we do not preach what God wants us to preach, including against homosexuality and lesbianism, we are but hypocrites. You're not hearing me. Because same-sex marriage is not just sin, but it's abomination in the sight of God. And the gay community would want the church to keep silent concerning their agenda. But as preachers under the blood-stained banner of Prince Emmanuel, we're going to preach the whole counsel of God. For we are called to be the head and not the tail. We are called to speak and not to keep silent. Can you see what is creeping inside God's church? And some of us as preachers, we're afraid to call sin by his right name. I was in a particular country. I was preaching and I can tell you, a note came to me on the platform saying, be careful what you speak here because your visa will be revoked and you're sent back to your country. I said, praise God, I have a nationality. I am not a criminal in my own country. I can go back as pleased as I want. So can I tell you, I came here not to compromise God's principle. I came to tell the nation that enough is enough, that righteousness exhorts a nation. But sin is but a reproach to any people. I say you can take your visa. You can take whatever you have. But I'm going to preach God's word. If you lock me up like Paul and Silas. I'll start prison ministry. We have a purpose down here. We are not figures looking nice and looking good. We are God's mouthpiece. Our ultimate purpose down here. Rescue the perishing. Care for the dying. Snatch them with pity. From sin and the can I tell you ladies and gentlemen don't miss your calling some are afraid Pastor Phillips they don't want to lose their church don't want to lose their married license don't want to lose their friend but can I tell you don't want to lose their vote but can I tell you, I keep telling you this, I'm going to tell you again, wrong is wrong even if it doesn't bother your conscience. Wrong is wrong even if you don't get caught. Wrong is wrong even if others consider it acceptable. Are you listening to me out here? Wrong is wrong, it doesn't matter. Once it is wrong, it is wrong. Call sin by its right name. There's something I want to talk about. Are you listening to me? There's a distinction between the church and the world. Hello? I said there's a big distinction between the church and the world. We can't approve what God has disapproved. Are you listening to me out here? There's a formula that is called worship. There's a formula that is tested and approved by God. And this formula is called worship. And not because Jesus is in the song that does not make it gospel. And some do not like the Adventist church. 
Because we operate off principles. We don't eat anything and anything and anywhere. We don't eat anything and any time and anywhere. We have a special diet. We operate a certain way. We don't sound like other people. We are unique. We are special. We are we, our thing. I notice that there's some Seventh-day Adventists now trying to sound like Pentecostals. I have no problem with the Pentecostals. They're God's people. But how we worship must we worship God intelligently. I don't see God pushing anybody on the floor. I see God picking up the blind man or the, the lame man. I see God opening eyes and let people see. Can I tell you, we are not invoking any spirit. Jesus said, when I go, I'll send you the comforter. The spirit of God is inside this place. And the reason why some of you are not shouting and praising God because you haven't felt anything. And some of us don't need a revival. We need a resurrection. Because we are dead. There's a big difference between worship and performance. We have too many performers in the church now. Too much perform They don't feel no remorse. They don't feel anything. You just came out of the spirit and you will touch them on their toe. They tell you a piece of their mind. Trying to impress people. But can I tell you church? When you love people, you will cry for souls. You will preach your heart out. I want you to know that God loves sinners. He hate the act of sin. God loves pretenders. He hate pretending. God loves liars, but he hates lying. God loves prostitutes, but he hates prostitution. He loves adulterers, but he hates adultery. He, ha he loves fornicators, but he hates fornication. So don't look. Are you listening to me? Don't be fooled for same-sex marriage. Was never instituted by God. It's about destroying the original institution of God. I told you that two institutions that God gave to the church, the Sabbath and marriage. And he attacked the Sabbath long time ago. He's destroying the homes and families. Talking about I'm adapting and you should call me mommy and daddy. That's a lie straight from the pit of hell. I want somebody to understand. I've never seen two rum goat coming together. I've never seen, are you listening to me? Two cock chicken coming together. Something is wrong with you. If you have a problem with that, if, if you want to do that, you have a problem. Something is seriously wrong with you. Even in the antediluvian world, if you notice, God placed a male and his female to continue to see the lie. I want the church to know in Luke, Chapter 17, verse 27, on down. And in the days of now, oh, and so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Uh, they did eat, they drank, they brought their married wives. They were given into marriage until the day that now uh, entered into the ark. I'm coming to a close. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, hear me carefully. Likewise also as in the day, in the days of Lot, can I talk to you? They did eat, they drank. They, are you listening to me? They bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But can I tell you, verse 9 29 says, But the day, but the day, but the day, but the same day that Lot went out of where? Can I hear you? The same day Lot went out of where? Sodom and rain, what? Fire and brimstone from where? From heaven and destroy them all. The question is, why would the Lord send us back to Noah's time? I was in Toronto, a particular year, and they brought me downtown. It was a particular street they brought me on was Church Street. And the very pedestrian is painted in rainbow colors. The light poles are painted in rainbow colors. The all kind of rainbow signs. And I wonder why, but see, it's not by accident why these homosexuals chose the rainbow for their color. 
Because the very indication of the rainbow is that it won't be any water again. So you know what? Help me like Capleton now. Not to burn out people, but to burn out sin. Fire. Hello? Come on, church. Fire. Homosexuality is not just sin, but it's a abomination. Fire. Lesbianism is not just sin, but it's abomination. God is coming back to put fire. Come on, shout it like you mean it. Fire. Are you hearing me out here? Let me read Matthew 13, 24 on down. Another parable he put forth to them. And I'm letting you know I'm a preacher of mercy. Likewise unto the man who, who sowed good seed in his field. But while they slept, men slept, the enemy came and slowed tear among the wheat and went away. But then the, broad, the blade was, was sprang up and the brought forth fruit and appeared to tear also. And the servant of the household came and said unto him, Sir, did not thou sow good seed in the field, in thy field, and from whence then at its tears? And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou not then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, that's while you gather up the tares, you wrote up also the wheat with them. Listen to verse 30 now. Let both grow together until the day of harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, bind them in bundle to burn them. But gather the wheat into his mouth. What did the, 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 the master say? Gather first the what? Can't hear you. Gather first the what? So the ones that will be taken out first are the bad ones. Am I right? And the good ones will leave after. Am I correct? I wonder why some people like the secret rapture thing. Because they, they, are, they are saying that when you're good, you're gone up to heaven. Are you following me? So you're taken out and you're gone to heaven. My Bible tells me that the tear will take out first. So the secret rapture cannot be biblical and fundamental and scriptural. Because the bad ones are never taken out first. The good ones rather are never taken out first. It is the bad ones are taken out first. And the good ones come what? After. And so watch this. The good people will remain in the church. And the bad ones will be what? Shaken out. They will come out first. Let the wheat and the tear grow together. Until the what? Until the what? Until the day of harvest. I want you to know that Jesus is a just like the Palestinian farmer. He knows that both wheat and tear look alike. There are some people inside the church who looks like tear and they are wheat. They are being choked by the cares of this life. Just need some pruning. Just need some care. Just need some love. Just need some prayer. Just need some encouragement to continue flourish like what God expected. And sometimes we want to pull them out. But can I have you to know Jesus the master reaper. Jesus the master sower. He knows the heart of every member inside the church. Let the wheat and the tear grow together till the day of harvest. I have no problem with the young men with their tight pants coming inside the church. I have no problem with the young ladies with their cleavage coming inside the church. They are coming to a hospital where sin sick problems are solved. They are coming to a Christ who knows how to cover their cleavage. They are coming to a Christ who know how to adjust their tight pants. But can I have you? We can have them inside the church but don't have those tight pants on my praise team you can have those cleavage out but don't have them on my music ministry team I can tell you have the homosexuals in your congregation they are God's children but don't have them on my finance committee because there must be a distinction between the good and the bad 
But the church is an hospital where sin, sick people comes. Sometimes we expect people who are getting baptized should be perfect. Lie. Let me say this. If any one of you out there think you're ready, you came here because you believe that you're ready, take off your gown and go back home. Think that you have set it straight. Take off your gown and go back home. You didn't come here because you have set it straight. You came here because you want God to set it straight. You came here because you have a weakness. Listen to me, church. A weakness of smoking. A weakness of porn. A weakness of cheating. A weakness of lying. Can I talk to the church? Don't kill them. They are babes. They are coming into the church to be groomed, to be taught, to be groomed. Can I have the church to know if it's one dress them have, make them wear it. The only reason you are there because you have your weakness. I have to talk strong to a lady when I call brown phone. And she answered the phone. Talk about him baptized much of time. I said him baptized 99 times. May I baptize him one more time at 100. One of the baptism will get you in. I'm not saying to go falter brown. If you falter again, call me, baptize you over again. You miss what the church and the purpose it's for. If some of you who just follow what the principle of the church should be, some of you would keep your tongue. I said some of you because I stopped doing it now. I used to. And some of us still doing it. You know why God says, Jesus said, leave them? Some of us are too coarse. Some of us are too judgmental. Some too hard. Some too political. Some of us are too rough. If you see us a member start wearing earrings, don't attack the member about the earring. Don't even look at the earring. Because the earring is an outward indication that something is wrong in the heart. You're not good, you're not, you're not, you're not good doctors, you know. Some of you are not good doctors. Whenever I feel pain, Ella Joshua, I am glad. The pain is an indication that, no, that I am sick. And I need to go see a physician. If there was no pain, I would have stayed there and died. Whenever the brothers and the sisters in the church behave a certain way, I am glad. It tells me that they are sick and they need Jesus. And every case is dealt with differently. That's the problem with some of the pastors. These days, remember the days when pastor used to visit your home, sit and talk with you. All the time you see pastors these days on Sabbath. Some pastors. Thank God you have two good ones out here. Let me bring this text, bring this passage home. There's something that you need to understand quickly. When the angel came, Lot did something that they shouldn't have done. Pastor Lewis, Lot was trading, and his wife, they were trading their daughters for the men of God. I want you to listen to me. Leviticus 19 verse 29 Say, so do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to become a war, lest the land fall into wardom and the land become full of wickedness. He said, I have two daughters that have not yet known men. In other words, they are virgin. Take them and do what you please with them. But the men say, stand back. Can I tell you that blindness is a sign of ungodliness? 
The reason why some of you in church, you have a membership, but you're still blind because there's no relationship. Blindness. We're searching to find the door. Nobody leaves the church. The church leaves them. This is a moving church. You talk about, I'm not going back to your church. We have no church. This is God's church. Are you hearing me out here? There's something I like about what God did. Listen what God did. God told the angels to hold on to Lot. Remember Lot was a pastor. And he failed to do exactly what God did. When the choosing take place, Lot, Abraham chose on the mountain. Lot chose to the plain towards Sodom. I want you to understand something about Mrs. Lot. She had enough religion to take her to church, but not to give her heart to Jesus. I want you to know some of us are good tithe payers, returners, but we have no compassion, no love. It doesn't make sense. Are you listening to me out here? And so the time came when God said, hold on to Lot. We, God was purposed to save Lot. And Lot got to save his family. What Lot did was put his family in front of him. Are you listening to me? And I want you to understand that the daughters, they were on their way out. The son-in-laws refused to come. They stayed. But he held on to his children. And his wife, they were held on. To, Lot held on to his wife. And the wife held on to the daughters. And the Bible says that his wife looked behind the Lot. Although she was in front of Lot. She's not just behind herself. But behind Lot that was behind her was that saddle. Look behind Lot and she became a pillow of salt. They were a movement. Like a mighty army moves the church of God. We are traveling where the saints have trod. We are not divided. All one body are we. One in faith. One in doctrine. One in love. One in charity. I want you to understand something that God held on to Lot and said, run for your life. Leave and don't look back. Man calls sin blunder, but God calls it blindness. Man calls sin accident, but God calls it abomination. Man calls sin chance, but God calls it choice. Man calls sin error. Our arrow, God calls it enmity. Man calls sin fascination, but God calls it fatality. Man calls sin luxury, but God calls it leprosy. Man calls sin liberty, but God calls it lawlessness. Man calls sin trifle, but God calls it tragedy. You don't hear me, church? I said, man calls sin mistake, but God calls it madness. Man calls sin weakness, but God calls it willfulness. Man calls sin distress, but God calls it willful. Are you listening to me? When you are distressed, you got to look with in because there is a power that lies within you. If you are distracted, all you need to do is to look around to see what is happening in the world and come to your senses. When you are disappointed, if you want to be disappointed, look to man. Man is the greatest disappointment. In order for Samson to come to his senses, God had to allow, God had to allow Samson to lose his sight in order for him to see you don't get that can I talk to you Genesis 19 24 and down and, and the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah fire brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven and uh, he overthrew the cities and all the plains and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which drew upon the ground but his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillow of salt can somebody have church with me now I want you to understand that the turning of the head is not the problem it's the turning of the heart 
Elijah. I need for you to understand the Bible gives us strict instruction. Lift up your heads unto the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help comes from the God who made heaven and earth. Like Anna hearing going to the temple to pray. We didn't hear the Lot going to know, Lot wife going to any temple to pray. Like Miriam, we didn't hear of Mrs. Lot sounding any timbrel. We didn't hear Mrs. Lot doing any kindness for the people of God. Some of us inside the church, we are like stumbling blocks hindering people from getting to God's kingdom. But I stop to tell you when the devil comes as a monument, you got to step past the devil himself because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I'm saying to somebody, run for your life. Leave and don't look back. I want you to understand it's God's responsibility to save the righteous. But it's also God's responsibility to destroy the wicked. We know we have some wicked people around, but that's God's responsibility. And so he's here pulling us out of bad company. For some of us out of abusive relationship. For some of us out of the bad job that is working on Sabbath. He's pulling us out of some bad relationship that is abusive. He's pulling us out of the rum bar. He's pulling us out of false doctrine, false teaching in order to save us. It was the angel's responsibility to grab Lot and pull him out of Sodom with his family. But it was Lot's responsibility to hold on to his family and say like Jacob, as for me and my house, we are leaving Sodom. It was the family responsibility to follow what God says. But it was God's responsibility to lead Lot where to go. It was Lot's responsibility to follow where God was leading. For Mrs. Lot, yes, Sister Lot did something that she shouldn't have done and she became a pillow of salt. I'm saying to the church, nothing wrong with being broken. Nothing wrong with being bad. Heard. Nothing wrong with being bruised or emaciated. But make sure when you are battered and bruised, you are in the end of the potter. Make sure when you make mistake, you're still inside the church. Jesus, the master potter, he can put you back together again. I'm saying to somebody, leave and don't look back. Come on, say leave and don't look back. Leave the rum bar. Leave the concubinage lifestyle. Leave hypocrisy. Leave bad criticism. Leave, leave up your working. Leave backbiting. Leave Sunday worship. It's God's responsibility to call us out. But it's our responsibility to answer the call. It's God's responsibility to bring us out of Sodom. But it's our responsibility to stay outside of Sodom. It's God's responsibility to bless us. But it's our responsibility to stay blessed. It is God's responsibility to turn us around. But it's our responsibility to stay turned around. It's God's responsibility to lift us up. But it's our responsibility to stay firm on the ground that God put us. Come on, leave false worship. Leave the rumba. Leave the man's wife. Leave the lady's husband. Leave the club. Leave witchcraft. Leave prostitution. Run for your life. Run for your life. There is a train that is leaving for glory. Behind every dark cloud, there is a silver lining weeping may endure for a night but joy as a joy comes in the morning can I tell somebody that there's a camp needed there is a camp needed there's a camp needed there's a camp needed in the promised land I don't know about you but I'm pressing on 
the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every time I press. Hold on, church. Pray on, church. Press on, church. Fight on, church. The battle is real. The battle is real. The battle is real. The struggle is real. With Christ in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. Shake it off. Shake it off. Run for your life. Run for your life. Leave the van. Leave the house. Leave the job. Leave your friends. Run. 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 Run for your life. Sing, my brother. Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue be. Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow, heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow, heaven can't and here so lay down your burdens lay down your shame all who are broken lift up your face oh I So lay down your hurt, lay down Listen your the heart, the song. come as you are. Listen to the words of this song. There's hope for the hopeless, all who have it? strayed. Come sit at the Stand table, with the preacher. come taste the grace. Stand with the preacher. Let's rest for the weary. Let us all stand. Rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven, heaven can cure. Can heal. Earth has no sorrow heaven can cure. Sing that stanza. Sing that song. So lay down your burden. Lay down your shame. Sing that song. When all who are broken lift up it doesn't your matter face. what your situations are. Oh, wanderer, come. My oh, God can fix it. Because you're not too far. My God can fix it. So lay down your hurt. Yes, he can. Lay down your heart. You're impressed. Come as 
To say, God, I'm taking it to you. Lay down your burden. Only you know my pain. Only you know my heart. Lay down your shame. Are you know what I'm going through. Yeah. You know what I'm stressed. You know what has stressed me out. You know my fear. Oh, I need to run. Oh, I truly need to run. I need to leave. This can't be an Lay accident. You, God, Lay have been spoken to me again. Heart. Come as you are. We pause. We pause. It was 2001. My wife was in New York City. Just about September. A few days before the 11th of September. 2021, 2001, Baba. I recall she called and said that she's going down to Manhattan. She was with child, with our child, with our son, Baba. And Pastor Phillips, she went up in the Twin Tower. And God would have it that she came out safe. While she was in the hospital, the 7th of September will be the birth, another birthday of my, our son. You remember 2001, 11th of September, what took place in New York City. I was home watching the, something on the television and every station, it was a newscast. The planes went crashing in the Twin Towers. Pastor Glenn Ho Samuels was preaching in New York City and the lady came to the meetings. A little before the crashing of the planes, the sermon he preached was run for your life. The lady, she had asthma. Winter was coming on. She went to the back of the tent, took a gown. The preacher walked off the platform, walked down into the aisles, kept on saying, run. Run for your life. He rests his hand on her shoulder. Looked her in her eyes and said the very same words, run for your life. The lady got baptized, came out of the water, did not have an asthma attack. God preserved her. She went to work that morning on the Twin Tower where she was working. She was going through her lesson study. Then came out of the elevator, a firefighter, when the first plane crashed. And the next word she heard was run from the firefighter. Run for your life. She got up from around her desk. The high heel shoes were too high for her to run. She kicked them off. Expensive though they were, she kicked them off. Rushed to the elevator. The firefighter said, no, take the staircase. Run for your life. She ran down the staircases. She ran outside our building. All the way over to the Brooklyn Bridge. She ran. She kept on running. While she was running, she kept hearing the voice of Pastor Glenn O'Samuel in her head. Run for your life. Run for your life. Run. Run. She heard crash. In that building, it could have been her. But the voice of the Spirit kept telling her, Run, 
I don't know who I'm preaching to. You are in a situation that you need to get out of. You can't by your own. You can't by yourself. But the great God, the big father, our elder brother is able, is capable to hold you by your hand like two angels to drag you out of that abusive and disgusting relationship you're in. How the false doctrine, false teaching. I'm saying to somebody today for the last time, I'm borrowing Pastor Glenn o. Samuel's word. Run for your life. Run Yalas, run Albion, run White Tosses, run. Don't take these words lightly. Run for your life. You did not come here to be baptized, but the Spirit of God has been speaking to your heart. You need some recommitment you have. Where are my gowns? Can you bring my gowns, please? I think I have to leave here. I have my gowns still available. You did not come to be baptized. But today you're saying, preacher, I am going to take the advice from the pastor. I know I did not come to be baptized. But because of what God did for me, what he saved me from, that gown in your hand, I want it to be my gown. The word is, run for your life. Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. Knees are shaking. The heart is pounding. As if you're standing at the judgment bar of God. What will be the next word? Will it be depart from me? Between the time that you die to the time you're resurrected, you will not know. It's like you go to bed and wake up. You will not know between the years of the 30th of March 2024. And God, He knows, I don't know when the eastern sky will birth open. But I don't want when I get up out of my grave and the jump. I hear from the voice of Jesus depart. For all those countries, all those souls, you have won. Abraham took the souls with him. I don't want to hear depart. For all the gifts you have given, for all the night meetings you have been to, all the lesson study you have done, all the Bible class you have been to, all the Vesper voice you've been encouraged by, all the sermon you have listened to, do you want to hear the part from me? I know you not. Walk out from where you are. Anyone you choose, the yellow or the green, is yours. Walk out and come. This gown is yours. Did not plan to be baptized. But the Spirit of God is speaking to me. I have decided to change my life. The last train for glory. Don't get left. Walk out and come. Walk out and come. You know me already. I have no shame when you come to my Jesus. Oh, sorry for the preacher. Don't, 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 don't feel bad for the preacher. It has nothing to do with me. You're not turning down Jeffrey. You're turning down my Jesus. I need a gun for myself too. Walk out from where you are. There's somebody. That's the same way Lot was pleading. He was begging, come. There is a gun. Not one moved. Come. Walk out. Don't let this be a testament for you. Don't let it be a testimony for you. Walk out. You once walked with Jesus. You were a member of the church. And you know you have faltered. You're not coming for prayer. You're coming for baptism. You're not coming for prayer. You're coming for baptism. You have a choice, sir. Which one you choose? The green or the yellow? Anyone you choose is yours. The yellow. Come on, church. Shout hallelujah. Come on, church. Shout hallelujah. 
is there another? You did not come to be baptized. But the Spirit of God is speaking to you. Walk out from where you are. The last gown in my hand is yours. The last gown in my hand is yours. The last gown. Too small. Give him this one. Sorry, but we have gowns in the back, so take him to the back. Is there another? Is there another? Walk out from where you are. Take him to the vestry. Let the pastors, allow the pastors to process him for me, please. Let him be carefully processed before he's baptized. Please, is there another? Is there another? If it's not your size, we have more gowns. Walk out from where you are. I'm not going to drag this call any longer. I did tell the parents that today will be a big baptism for the children. Let me see the parents who have brought their children to be baptized. Oh, I didn't see Sister Jump. How oh, could I? Oh, bless my heart. Good to see you, Sister Jump. Any mother and father who have brought their children to be baptized, just bring the children down for me, please. You brought your children. Is the children in gown already? Stay where you are. Children in gown? Child in gown? That's okay. You have brought your children to be baptized. Let's bring the child down. Right at the altar. Bring the child down. All the children to be baptized. Let's bring them down for me, please. Bring all the children down for me, please. If the hell can prepare for them a place, heaven can prepare also. You think hell not going to willing to take them? You better believe it. If hell is willing to take them, heaven is willing to take them too. Come on, bring the children down. Bring the children down for Jesus. I believe I should not go home with this gown in my hand. There is another for Jesus. Somebody is saying, preacher, don't cut the call yet. Somebody is on the verge of making a final decision. The time is long gone. Yes, sir. Long, long gone. But somebody said, preacher, the spirit said, preacher, don't cut the call yet. There is somebody who wants to recommit his or her life. And they're waiting for that moment to move. If you notice, I didn't make a general call. I'm making specific call. Only for baptism right now. You have heard several calls. But today you're saying, preacher, today is my day. I want to be baptized. Ella Porches, could you join me, please? Could you join me, please? I'm going to ask while the pastor is praying. If that's when you get the courage to move, the gown will be in my hand. The gown will be in my hand. There's a member who once walked with God. But today you want to say, Preacher, I want to recommit my life. Walk on and come. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. We are praying this afternoon. We are praying. Great God of heaven, we have looked on the plain and we have pitched our tents towards Sodom. And now we know, Father, that not all that glitter is gold. And we have come to recognize that we have drifted from you. And we have become entangled in sin. But I thank you today. That though our feet seem planted where we are. You are willing to send your angels to hold our hands. And to take us to safety. Oh God, today our hearts are crying out for help and mercy. Thank you 
that there is someone just beside us who may be willing to hold our hand and walk to the altar this afternoon because God it is the desire of our hearts to be saved so hold us by our hands Father and lead us to higher ground as we come today Father we thank you for those who were willing to stand with you on the Lord's side. Oh God, what a joy divine. They are willing to stand on your side. And those, oh Father, who have committed their hearts to you, we know you will in no wise cast them off. God, and rejoice is even now for the saving of these souls. Thank you for those who are in their robes and are properly dressed, oh God, for victory. But there are many others, Father, who are to come. For whatever reason, Father, we pray that your spirit will prepare their hearts because if they don't accept today may they know our final night is yet tomorrow night oh God work on their hearts that souls will be won for your kingdom lives will be saved and as we are transformed we will allow others to get a fresh glimpse of you so thank you again for your love and your mercy. Thank you for your man's servant and the preaching of the word. Thank you, oh God, that he paused long enough to save me. Have your own way this evening. Be with everyone within the hearing of our voice. May your spirit continue to tarry and to linger with them until all will say, I yield. This is our prayer as we accept sweet salvation that comes only through Christ Jesus. Thank you for the courage today, Father, to go all the way with you in watery baptism is our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask the candidates for baptism to come forward to the front. I'm just going to ask all the candidates to move forward to the front. I'm going to ask one or two of the Bible instructors to stand beside the candidates at this time. The pastor, Ole Hello, is in charge to do the vows there is a name that was asked to call did you find that person sister bruce uh, maybe the person's not here we go see the person tomorrow all the persons for baptism please come forward all the persons for baptism please come forward waiting for the gentleman who came up last to change and to join us at this time, I'm going to ask the members in, in total, totality to see your best you can stay and support. We know we went over time. If you're diabetic, slip out and get something to eat and stand beside the candidates. Angels in heaven are rejoicing. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, you two, eleven. All right, let me go again. We have, what, 12 persons to be baptized? Am I right? One to change. Uh, we give God thanks. Amen. All right. Uh, we're just going to tarry a little more. Just to, could we just play something or sing something while we wait on the other candidate? Could somebody give me an update on the candidate, please? 
ask the deacons and the deaconesses to stand by ready to for baptism please deacon and deaconesses stand by very at this time for baptism all deacons and deaconesses stand by at this time by the side of the pool for baptism we are we're not dismissing please don't leave and if you have to go get a bite if you're diabetic you go but we are supporting the candidates what do you say come on put your hands together for all these candidates put your hands together for all these wonderful souls that have been saved snatched from the hand of the enemy can somebody say hey man can somebody say hey man I the Savior I felt fire from above I've been down to the river I'm not the same a prodigal return that's why we sing to the prison I've worn the shackles and chains but I've been freed and forgiven not going back I'll never be the same that's why we sing oh save me too. He's the lane. He's coming to save all of us. What do you say? Sister Bruce. He's the lane. He's coming to save the Bible workers and the preacher. Because we too need to be a part of his coming. What do you say? Amen. Amen. The deacons are ready. The deaconesses, they are ready. They are in their place. The pastor is in the water. Am I right? One of the pastors in the water. Uh, we are waiting. Even while they are coming, if you're impressed to come forward, uh, invited to come, invited to come. There's a gown still on my podium. There's a gown still on my platform, my podium. Uh, it's for you. And uh, I wonder if there's somebody in line who would like to say, Preacher, I want to be baptized. If you're not here in Jamaica, we can find a church. Wherever you are, just put it in the chat for me, please. 
And we will find a church for you. Wherever you are, we will find a church, a pastor, to baptize you. All right, the time is really going now. We may have to wait on him, have to work. Time is really going. We're going to ask. We might have to do the alternate vows with that person because we need to get going. Amen, somebody? Time is slipping away. But we wait until the person is changed. We have tomorrow evening, which is the last night. <laughs> yes, uh, it's not a part of the program, but it's as a committee we voted in. wasn't a part, rather. So the grand finale will be tomorrow night. We didn't the gentleman. Uh, is the, uh, all right, yes, there's a candidate changing. He's coming. I, I will delay the service even for one. Amen, church. Amen. I will delay the service even for one. And uh, you, when you get to heaven, you will know how important a soul is. Amen, somebody? I will delay this service even for one. Because a soul is important to God. Amen? A soul is important to God and their heaven rejoicing in heaven. Coming. Could, could you sing another song for me, please? While you're coming. His voice makes the different. When he speaks, he relieves my troubled mind. It's the only voice I hear that makes.
the voice is right. speaking to me is coming at this time to deceive and to lead me astray yes it is coming but my shepherd's voice is different from all others i'm his sheep and i know my master's way is coming today and accordingly souls have been touched and there before us standing are those who are willing to stand on the Lord's side they are willing to walk with him all the way they are saying to us goodbye world they are ready to be separated unto Christ their Lord and Savior what do what does the church say so as they come today it is our delight to have them examined before us and in the interest of time we will use the alternate vows. We will ask three questions. And candidates, if you believe so, if you are in agreement, I ask you to raise your right hand. Are you following me? So let us go together as we take these vows do you accept jesus christ as your personal savior and lord and do you desire to live your life in a saving relationship with him amen, amen. praise god they all answered in the affirmative do you accept the teachings of the bible as expressed in the statement of fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And do you pledge by God's grace to live your life in harmony with these teachings? Amen. 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 Finally, do you desire to be baptized as a public expression of your belief in Jesus Christ? To be accepted into the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And to support the church and its mission as a faithful steward by your personal influence, your tithe and offerings, and a life of service. Amen. They have answered all the questions in the affirmative. Do we have a motion that we accept these candidates as members subject to their baptism? Is it, it is moved. Is there a second? It is seconded. All those who are in favor, could you say hi and just raise your right hand? Turn around and look. Everybody desires to see you in the kingdom of God. Amen. Let us say amen. Is there any other, is there any other who would oppose their entrance into the family of God? And if you look around, there is no opposer, no one. Amen. Praise God. So as we prepare to go all the way, we will have a special prayer done by Elder Evangelist Noel Drum. I invite the church to stand with us, please. 
Just for a moment. Is it Pastor Phillips? <laughs> All right. Let us pray. Kind Father, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. And so, Lord, these your precious ones have come today. They have set the world behind us, the cross before us. No turning back. In fact, they are saying, I will follow thee, my Savior, wheresoever my lot may be. Where thou goest, I will follow. By thy grace, I'll follow thee. Take them, Lord. Do for them far more than they could ever ask or think. And help them to remember that day at the foot of Mount Sinai. When the Lord said to Israel, You have seen what I have done to the Egyptians. And I have bear you up on eagle's wings and brought you unto myself. You have taken them out of bondage of sin. You have taken them out of bad habits. You have taken them out. Lord, they have run for their lives. And you are saying, you are accepting them as your children. For all who accept Jesus, you'll give them the power to become the sons and daughters of God. So we commend and commit them into your care. And we ask that you bless their homes. Bless, in their, their, bless them in their going out and in their coming in. Bless them at their work. Bless them in school. So that all who see them will know that they have been with Jesus and call them blessed. Trouble the waters, Father. Be with our pastors as they take us through the rite of baptism. And as they go down in the water grave of baptism, may they come up to walk in the newness of life for your name's honor and glory. Let God's people say, Amen and Amen. Come by here, my Lord.
Amen, church. We're happy this afternoon we have in the water to be baptized. Brother Kirk Jeffrey and Anthony Watson. We will have a song for Brother Kirk Jeffrey and then after I will do the citation. Many years I long for rest Perfect peace within my breast And I often saw the Lord alone in tears But I could not pay the price Could not make the sacrifice So I wandered on and on for many Let me lose myself and find it, Lord, in Thee. May all self be slain and friends see only Thee. Though it cost me grief and pain, I will find. Thank you so much, my brother. My brothers, having accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, as ministers of the gospel, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us say amen. All the way to Calvary he went for me. Suzuki, license 5660KZ. That person would like to leave and you're blocking the person. We're asking you to attend to your vehicle just now. Thank you very much. We have in the water... Jobby Edwards.
Amen. Now we have in the water Joby Edwards and Karshmark Brown. These two have surrendered their lives to Jesus and are willing to go all the way in baptism. So my dear brothers, you have accepted the Lord as your Savior and today we share with you in baptizing you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Check. Turned a page for a new day has dawned, and we rearrange what is right and what's wrong. Somehow we're drifting so far from the truth that we can't get back home. And where are the virtues that once gave us light? And where are the morals that govern? our lives someday we all will awake and look back just to find what we've lost oh. we need to get back to the basics of life a heart that is pure and the love that is blind a faith that is firm be grounded in Christ, the hope that endures for all time. These are the basics we need to get back to the basics of life. Newest rage is to reason it out. And just meditate and you can overcome every doubt After all man is a God They say God is no longer alive But I still believe Oh, I still believe the changes of time, through the changes of time, we need to get back to the basics of life, a heart that is pure and a love that is blind, a faith that is fervently grounded in Christ, the hope Thank you very much, my brother. We have in the water okay. we have in the water a husband and wife who will thank the Lord. They have begun on the right track, getting married, and so they are surrendering their lives to Jesus Christ. Amen. We have in the water Sister Cadian Watson Lester and Brother Ravel Lester. Okay, to the honor and glory of God, you have surrendered your life to, God, to the Lord, and today, as a church, and as ministers of the gospel, we endorse your decision. So, upon the profession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thought number one 
in the water, little sister Timo Smith and sister Shekinah Campbell who was married on Thursday and she has decided that all the way with Jesus Christ. So my sisters, upon the profession of your faith in accepting Jesus Christ as your personal savior from sins, we now as ministers of the gospel baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let the church say Amen. As the deer can bear the fall, the water so my soul longed after thee. Everybody lift your voice and say, you alone, say.
we're getting it sorted out. We want you to know that the devil is always around and he wants to conquer. they're going in the pool these will be the last two candidates for the pool we have two more candidates who will be going by the seaside for their baptism that's a special request and Sister Leela Thomas and Sophia Nicole Shand bent in the water and you have accepted the Lord as your Savior and because of this upon the profession of your faith we as ministers of the gospel baptize you in the name of the Father in the name of the Son and in the name of the blessed Holy Spirit let the church say Amen let your living water flow let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind. All my fears and burdens unto you. brothers and sisters you have witnessed this wonderful experience of souls making a commitment to the Lord we have completed the act of baptism here but you might have been sitting down there and you have been contemplating and now we are fully convinced that you should be in the next baptism if you are one of those persons I'm going to invite you just without any hesitation just come to the front so we can talk with you and pray with you. Is there one? You didn't come here today for any baptism, but just the Spirit spoke to you as you watch these baptized and you want to come. Just come right here now. The, uh, the hours there. I'm going to invite the congregation to stand. Okay, and such person who would like to be in the next baptism just move to the front here just move to the front we just want to get your names and that's all and we'll arrange with you for the baptism okay we're not going to keep you too long I'm going to invite you to bow your heads now for the closing prayer almighty God our heavenly father you have commissioned us and we have accepted the commission. You have had your manservant to speak your words and the words were spoken and hearts surrendered to you. But just now we linger a little longer because we feel that there might just be someone in this congregation who would like to go all the way with you. So Lord, as they contemplate this and as we go home to our various places of abode to return to fellowship this afternoon we pray your blessings upon those who have committed their lives to you and upon those who are contemplating baptism 
We thank you for our evangelist. And we thank you for the good weather that you have permitted for us today. We bless your name now, Lord. And as we go, we go in courage and faith that you are God and that you are still reigning. Into your hands I commend everyone now. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, let the church say, Amen. Just before you go, just a gentle reminder. Tomorrow night, tomorrow evening will be the final night of our meetings. We are, we'll be having a candle lighting ceremony, or service rather, to close our series. I'm going to ask you to get your candles or we will make sure we have that can share if you don't. But try and get your candles for tomorrow evening. You can't afford to end like this. Let us have a grand finale tomorrow evening by God's grace. And I must let you know I left the best sermon for last. You got to be here in your number. Thank you very much. Enjoy lunch at this time. Amen. As we go, the hosts will come and we do the departure at this time. Thanks to Pastor Ella Jump. Thanks to Pastor uh, Phillips. And thanks to Ella Porches for helping us in this regard. Thank you. was surely on the Lord's servant one more time today we have been in the presence of the Lord amen we thank you for joining in our worship thus far and we invite you to join us this afternoon at 3 30 p 3 30 p.m with pastors RuPaul Livingston and Sean Edwards who will, will continue to feast on the word of God now, following our afternoon service, Sister Chrisanna, and the close of the Sabbath, we are going to be having our grand gospel concert. Brethren, Amen. friends, you cannot afford to miss it, so please be here. Amen. So, we were indeed your host today. I am Chrisanne Hamilton. And I am Denisha Hamilton. Now, remember to take a friend with you and share the link on all platforms. Now, God be with you till we meet again.